to fight for
Good evening, race fans, and we are here for something brand new, the Simza Endurance Challenge, Simza number two. This is round one. It is a multi-class endurance race, and we're coming to you live from Daytona Road Course for round number one. Uh, someone's saying that they can't hear the audio on the screen. Um, it's going out, so maybe it's something at your end, but it's definitely going out from this end. Uh, or it was, anyway. Uh, right, so we're at Daytona, 3.5 miles and 12 corners. Very tricky infield here, uh, but the rest of the circuit pretty much... Uh, pretty much uh, straightforward. It's uh, the You've got the oval pretty much for most of it, and then you've got that tricky infield, which um, that that's what sorts the men from the boys here. You've got the slipstream, which makes it nice and easy to catch up and, and keep up with people, but uh, the, the that, that tricky infield section through sector one, that's where it sorts out the men from the boys. So we've got a group one and group three cars on the same racetrack. Um, quality has split. The GR1s are going to go first. Um, they do seven and a half minutes. Um, then once they go into the pits, the GR3s go out and they get their seven and a half minutes um, of qualifying. Uh, before then, everyone goes on the track and they all race together. Um, clearly, obviously, the GR1s are racing the group ones and the uh, group threes are racing the other group threes. We'll have a little look and see what we got car wise, shall we? Let's go. Right, so. Uh, it's 919 uh, hybrid for the Group 1 drivers. Um, you would expect that that's going to be a, a pretty decent battle between those three. Um, good selection of Group 3 cars, though. Uh, the McLaren 650S, the Mustang, that uh, awesome Lexus RCF uh, is there as well. Uh, you've got the Mercedes-AMG GT3, which is quite a strong car around here. And, um, of course, the uh, awesome awesome 911 rsr um which is uh, probably what out of all those the strongest car through the infield so it'd be interesting to see how everyone fares in qualifying qualifying is starting in about one minute's time so it is multi-class so essentially the way this works is they all race on the racetrack together um clearly the group ones are going to catch the group threes pretty quickly and lap them they're on they're running their own separate little series um the Group 3s have uh, priority for the racing line. It's down to the Group 1s to go around them. It shouldn't be too difficult here at Daytona. It's a pretty wide racing circuit. Um, but it does require a little bit of awareness, particularly from the Group 3 drivers, because you know, when they see a car in their mirror and it's another Group 3, you can kind of guesstimate that it's going to take X amount of time to get there. The Group 1s are going to come up very, very quickly. And particularly because it's such a fast circuit, Daytona, with the oval, you're going to see um, some incredible speeds in that 919 Porsche uh, hybrid. Uh, so, quality is about to begin. Uh, the GL1s are going to go out first. They've got, they've got some, about seven and a half minutes of quality for those guys um expect to see some really really quick times don't know how close they're going to run together but there's four of them so it will be good to see what sort of times they put on the board um lobby two will be up at 8 p.m uh straight after this now the plan was for um Corinthians to do lobby two uh he might be having some technical problems so you um, you might you might end up having me back for that uh, if he can't sort out those technical issues between now and uh, 8 p.m., which is a couple of hours from now. Right, so they're just reloading in, and Quali will uh, begin shortly. Looking forward to this. Some really quick drivers out there today as well, from uh, from all over the world, which is good. I'd like to see a, a good splattering of, of international drivers um, across the UK, across uh, Canada, um, across Italy and uh, France and all over Europe, Portugal as well. Um, yeah, good splattering of drivers from all over. Right, everyone ticking in and then qualifying will begin. We will keep you up to date over the course of the season 12 races, of course. Um, this is what the season looks like. Uh, Daytona, obviously, today for an hour and a half. Um, back next week on the 14th for Laguna Seca, one hour there. Uh, followed by one of my favourite circuits in Lagos for an hour. Um, end of April, we're at Le Mans, the king of endurance racetracks. Uh, followed by its, uh, its, its, its queen, the Nuremberg Ring. 
Um, Red Bull Ring is after that, then Spa. Monza on the 2nd of June. 9th of June will be uh, Catalonia. Uh, Watkins Glen on the 23rd. Little break between those. 30th of June will be Suzuka. And then into July, it's Fuji before we finish out with an hour and a half at Road Atlanta. Uh, that's going to be the 14th of June. Everything is going to be absolutely live uh, right here on Black Flag Racing TV. Uh, both Lobby 1 and Lobby 2. Uh, hello, everyone in chat. Who we got? Justin, how you doing, mate? Um, Arcanite Prime. Um, Arcanite said he might join me in the comms. I'll get that sorted out in a minute. Um, so we, maybe he'll come and join me and we'll have a, we'll have a little a little chat. Um, but yeah, looking forward to this. Um, who else we got in there? Evasion and uh, Skinky. Skinky, is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, well. Well, thanks for joining us and we'll, uh, we'll see how they get on. Um, right, just waiting for the go, 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 go. Uh, 11 runners out this day. We've got four uh, in the it's four, four in the group ones, and the remainder are all going to be in group threes. Obviously, the, 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 you would have thought the front four in qualifying are going to be the group one cars. Uh, without a doubt, it, it'd be very difficult not to qualify on the front two rows in a group one car when you're going up against some group threes. But uh, I don't know. You never know, do you? You never know. What are we waiting on? I think everybody's ticked in. Yeah, everyone's ticked in. Everyone's ready. Good quality of drivers there with me at the bottom with my with my, with my crappy little D ranking. Um, but that's because I actually don't care about uh, I don't care about the um, DR system. It's not it's not a very accurate system of, of, of assessing your driving ability. I know many many A plus drivers who are uh, a B at best. Um, but equally, I know some, some uh, B and C drivers who are uh, A-plus quality, so there we have it. Uh, monkey Ham. Skin Abe Skinky is Danish and says Monkey Ham in English. I love it. Monkey Ham. That's pretty decent. Right, what are we waiting for? Why have we not started? TikTok, TikTok, especially the, if, if I could have to do uh, the other lobby at eight o'clock, because um, this is going to be what's, what's an hour and a half. So uh, yeah, time's a ticking. So here we go. Qualify is about to begin. All right, let's bring up some uh, some details, shall we? We're doing on board. We're doing a bob with both the uh, Group 1 and the Group 4, shall we? Well, who's going to go out first? That's the big point of this. I want to turn off um, the yeah, So it's just the four Group 4s going out. Uh, and it looks like Corey, uh, the Canadian driver, is going to be first out in this 9 run line. Uh, closely followed by uh, Scorpio, uh, then Kiko, and then, of course, the uh, the ever-quick Philo Engineering. Um, um, and if you if you are interested in learning about tuning in uh, Radio Racer, uh, this guy Fino has got a, a wonderful car on the internet. Um, I can't remember the web address, but I will uh, find it and at some point and, uh, and share it with you. But um, I, I know infinitely more about tuning than I did previously. I'm actually not too often about having a go at it now. Right, so I'm staying. Do on board anyway, but, uh, so this is where you start to ramp up the speed. Uh, they're going to want to, of course, get as much heat through these tyres in this section as they possibly can. Um, hey, doing Porto? Not sure, Kiko had to replace me. Um, hope you're doing uh, better, uh, Porto. Hope you're feeling much, much better with Kiko replacing you. So, um, yeah, feel better soon, man. Feel better soon. Uh, so Corey out of that bus stop she came, uh, which is a very tricky. Um, it's all about getting if you get your entrance into it right, your exit kind of solves itself. But you've got to make sure you get your braking right down in there. Right, you start to ramp up the speed, start your hot lap, staying nice and wide as he kicks round to the left. 
full power, crossing the line, down to turn one, slamming on the anchors right about now, getting it turned in, second gear, and just get that rotation in the front of that car, we get back on the power, flicking it to the right, then to the left, heading down to the water, essentially turn three, um, nice low um, centre of gravity you need here to get the car turned, and in, in second gear, you sound really tricky in the fuel section, you go flat out, as it keeps to the left hand side. Be careful on the brake, it's almost immediately on those brakes for this tricky right hander. Um, a little stab on that accelerator, and the car drifts to that right hand side. Again, on the brakes, not too much, try to carry as much speed as possible. Through this, back out on to the tri-oval, and then on the power you go. The back end's gonna wanna step out and stamp on that power you can fight it, and hold on for gear line. This is where it is foot absolutely planted to the floor. The hybrid power in this Group 1 car, pulling it along at a rapid rate, 186, 187 miles an hour. With that, uh, changing down to floor gear, into that bus stop chicane, you can see there, entry absolutely perfect, exit uh, even better when you get a good entrance. Back up into sixth gear, I don't see it's all that. Uh, up into seventh, and then you keep it from the planting. With Slipstream, it is entirely possible to get up to about one, uh, 199, maybe even 200 miles an hour in these Group 1 cars if you tuck right under the wheel of another driver. So let's have a little look you see. Um, after the first hot lap, it's Kiko, uh, who is in for uh, Porto, who's, who's unwell, and um, sets the fastest lap thus far uh, with Corey joining him on that front row we on board with Corey. Uh, still waiting for Scorpio and Philo to set their hot laps. Uh, welcome to the chat, Martin Brownell and uh, don't do. Uh, I don't know what you said, mate. I, uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an English but I'm an English. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if, if, you, if you could type it in, it should be great, but uh, I'm fine. Uh, right, so Philo Engineering still to set a time. That's Scorpio Ivan uh, with a 132.3. Puts him on that road too. Um, this is essentially a battle for the front two rows. And Philo Engineering straight off the bat with a pole position time a second quicker than Kiko. 131.0. So the first driver goes sub 32. Uh, not much in it for Kiko to get there though. Only needs to find a tenth. A tenth will be enough to put Kiko um, in that sub 32. But he's going to need to find ten of those. And he's not going to do it on this lap not carrying that half second penalty. Let's have a look at some livery, shall we, while they're, while they're going for um, Dare to dream, I do, I do dare to dream this week. Don't we all? I um, really like the look of that contrast in yellow and black. Um, it makes you think of wasps, um, and we were of course for massive, massive times. Uh, there is Kiko in for Porto. Um, understated, but still very, very cool. It's, it's quite a difficult car to, uh, to get. Uh, well, I don't like any of it. Uh, Corey, um, that looks very, very neat. I like the black flag colours. It's a black flag on racing colours. Um, with Scorpio now on pole, that's a really good black flag. 30 point nine, we go sub 31. Uh, Fido Engineering, that's his trademark. Um, Fido Engineering. Um, you'll notice at the bottom there's uh, a few uh, charities that are supported. Sands, uh, which is a stable charity, uh, Martin House Children's Hospice, um, the uh, Hag, which is a full um, and the Care for the Catch Danger 2 as well. All supported by uh, this wonderful group, uh, Two Wolves Racing, who put together this Simza Endurance Challenge for me. And it's going to be an exciting season of 12 races. You look at the pace already. Um, front row has changed hands a couple of times and it's Scorpio and Philo now on that front row. Corey's closed the gap to Philo to about six tenths. So only 1.1 seconds separating those four drivers. And I wouldn't be surprised if that gap comes down further as we move further into Corfo. It is only seven minutes or seven and a half minutes. So uh, this will be there in lap uh, because uh, once they are done, uh, the Group 3s will come out with uh, the second half of the qualifying two guys. They're in the lap, I would have thought.
before. Um, or do they get one more crack at it and then come down? So I suppose they could do a, a hot lap and then come down and come in. They'll be a bit in the way of the big fours if that's the case. So there's your pole sitter. Um, he has improved slightly. He's found another few tenths. I've got it down to 130.6. Uh, Philo uh, hasn't improved on that 31.0 as yet. But is this when he plonks himself firmly onto pole, not looking up 32.2 is the best he has there. And did Scorpio get some good slips through somewhere maybe? Is that what helped him out? Uh, so in that for Philo. Now, uh, Corey. This is his final hot lap, I believe. 31-1 is his fastest thus far. It's only half a second off pole. Nothing separating him and the front row at the moment. Uh, with Filo now having not improved his time, that's uh, giving him every opportunity for Corey to steal uh, a nice little pole position for himself. Around he comes, going across the line, and it's not. Uh, better than his previous in state on row two. And Kiko, of course, like he does improve, improves and puts himself on that front row, knocking Philo down onto row number two. Uh, I think we're going to see now that the group three cars should be coming out. We're uh, seven, over seven and a half minutes into qualifying, uh, but no group threes coming out as yet. I'm surprised they're not. They should be, really. Um, you would have thought they would come out as the as, as the Group ones are finishing their qualifying. They seem to still be going round when they should be coming into the pits. Absolutely, they should be coming into the pits. It's only seven and a half minutes each. So um, I think any time set beyond this time shouldn't be counted, should it? Yeah, they're going incredibly cold tyres. Um, and the time's running out for them. Big time running out for them. A Fino engineer puts himself on pole. The problem is, though, it's outside their own qualifying time. They should have come in at the end of the last lap um, because it's only seven and a half minutes qualifying for those group ones so a little bit unfortunate but it looks like they're just going to out to the end. maybe the format's changed and no one told me that that could be the case i thought that was i thought it was a uh, half and half for the two classes um yeah they, i think the gr3 is really been struggling with the um they've got they've got the outlet to run them up but it's going to be really hard I suppose the easiest thing to do is to do a tyre change before you come out. So essentially, um, changing for the outpost of the tyre you come in um, are a little bit warmer. Um, but you're going to have to put a lot of load through them. Um, and they're not gonna, the thing is, if they are going to be coming out soon, they're not going to have long to set a tyre. Bear in mind they're running cold tyres. These, these, these Group 1 cars don't look like they've got any intention of coming in any time soon. So, uh, clearly staying out there. So, Scorpio Ivan is now in. Uh, Philo should be coming in. Uh, I can answer to go. So, they've got they've got 10 minutes now. I thought it was 7 and a half, but uh, maybe I was wrong. Uh, right, so in comes Philo. Uh, no, he doesn't try to come out So, he doesn't uh, improve. Uh, Scorpio Ivan is on pole as it stands with Philo. Uh, joining him on that front row, Kiko um, is having one last crack at it. Uh, Corey is well just up ahead. Uh, no slipstream for Kiko, so that's not really ideal. Can Kiko or Corey steal a front row spot as they come through the bus stop? She came really close with Corey. Really, Corey is not going super, super quick. Is that little bit of slipstream now that Kiko's picking up from the back of Corey Carl the Canadian? Can he help Kiko onto that front row? Looking at the time going through that line, I don't think he's going to be quick enough. Uh, not quick enough, but he does hold on to uh, third. Uh, so there we go, that's the group one's done. Now it's time for the group threes to go. And uh, the ba boss, ba -ba -ba -boss um, sneaking. Um, underneath uh, Malagator, who's in a great position actually because he's going to pick up some lovely draft from um, from uh, I've got ahead of him. I've got I've got all the issues on.
Yeah, so Bella Gator's going to get a nice little tow here. Um, how long is he going to get it for? Oh, that's the thing. The problem is, if, if, if the tow is too good, he's going to get held up through that infield uh, as they go in. So ideally, he want to back off just a little bit and stay close enough that when he comes out of the infield, that he then picks up that really, really good tow. So here we go into the first hot lap for these guys. And uh, ignore everything I said about seven and a half minutes, it's ten minutes. Um, but not nobody else knew either. So uh, I'm not the only one that was uh, poorly involved. <coughs> so this Lexus, um, as we saw when we did the uh, Daytona 24 hours um, earlier, sorry, uh, at the end of last month, um, the Lexus was a bit of a dark horse around here. And over the course of an endurance race, actually it's pretty good on tires, pretty good on fuel. And it's a, it, it, it's, a, it's a quite a decent match for um, the Porsches and the um, and the McLarens. And the Porsche are not super, super strong. Right, so, um, that is the boss uh, behind Maligator now. Uh, so he's going to be getting the slipstream from back of Maligator as uh, he, he went through onto this uh, tri-oval. Now, uh, we were looking at speeds of just shy 200 mile an hour on those cars. Uh, 187 as they hit down to this bus stop chicane. It's not super, super different there. 160. Um, I mean, in, in the scheme of things, 20 mile an hour, um, when you're doing 200 or 180, there's not that much difference. But it, it, you'd be surprised over the course of an hour and a half, that's just how much difference that makes to your final time. Uh, half second penalty for Maligator, uh, which he might get away with not serving this time around. We'll see. Uh, no, he's serving this time around, so that is essentially going to screw that lap up for him. Um, so what we're looking for is uh, fifth place on the, so the front of row three is what these guys are aiming for. And first up is Martino in that, uh, that gorgeous pink delivery. Uh, that's very a very, very cool animal. Very cool anime on his vehicle. Uh, Nicky is joining him on row three in the green Mustang, going for that uh, American muscle. Uh, KBM, he's in that AMG GT3, and I do love the delivery on the side of that car. Very, very cool hexagon bags. Um, Seem to get, be getting backed up though, a few cars getting backed up behind it. You would have thought there's only there's only a few of them. Space yourself out around the racetrack a little bit. Um, you, you're going to end up you know, causing yourself and your competitors just a few problems. Um, Maligator, as we know, uh, didn't set a great time. He had a penalty. Um, currently sitting on row four. Row five is Kingston in the McLaren 650S. It looks a little bit like a Duracell battery, um, but a very, very cool. Uh, Cloud9, um, also in that uh, AMG um, Again, that has been. Um, uh, sorry, it's not the AMG GT, it's in the Porsche 911, it's very similar to the AMG GT3 uh, pattern that I was trying to see. Um, so yeah, very, very cool. I think, uh, the only thing that I think with the Porsche 911, um, there's a few tracks this season where Porsche 911 is going to be absolutely beast mode. Um, here, not so great, it doesn't have that poke, kind of high-end poke that um, when you're racing on and over, so it's going to struggle a little bit in that regard. Um, the boss at the moment at the Baba, sorry, good not um, on Road 6, but not anymore. The boss is no longer at the Baba, uh, he's jumped up a couple of places into ninth position. Right, halfway through qualifying for these GT3 cars, uh, the difference is about 14 seconds between uh, the front two rows and these GR3s are back on the road, backwards. So you can see, even though it's, uh, you know, it's exactly 20 mile an hour, difference with the bus stop chicane, or just over just 20 mile an hour, 25 mile an hour the bus stop chicane, um, it makes a, a, a massive difference. They don't have the acceleration, of course, of the uh, the and the cars. They don't have the top end speed of the one cars. Um, and they don't necessarily have the same grip um, and high speed through the corners of those group one cars. Um, which is where why they lose so much time in the person. So 14 seconds is that kind of benchmark. Um, difference between these guys though, not a lot. Um, it's, 
it's half a second, half a second. Although well, Martin Martinio is uh, 17 time um, on Nicky when he's printing the time quick. Uh, is Nicky quicker this time and into the bus stop Nicky goes. E -a -e -a -e -a -o. Um, Nice bit of slipstream up ahead, that's going to help with the lap time. And um, round the bend, and you see that pedal, like the pen pedal is here, are oh, absolute brutal penalties. A few old bloody cities. <laughs> yeah, that's, um, so I'll just, I'll just see in there that I can understand that's the old lobby setting. So it's, it's 10 minutes now rather than seven minutes. Um, so clearly that was how to be changed it. Uh, right, so Maligator gets himself on to row three along with Martinio. Close that gap to just under two and a half tenths of a second. Uh, with Nicky um, itching, itching, itching to get in. Nothing separating them. Um, a little bit of a slipstream train here um, with Nicky being the big benefit. Um, of this as they come out. He doesn't want to get too close to the back of that McLaren though. That is going to hamper him uh, on this hot lap. If the gap is just big enough, um, the slipstream is your friend. And then out onto the trial they come. That AMG up ahead, which for me is probably one of the best looking uh, GT3 cars. Um, I was genuinely disappointed when they swapped out that uh, G there, that, that uh, AMG GT3 for the Aston Martin as the police car, the safety car, sorry, that, uh, so no, no, <laughs> an American race track for 20 minutes already on the police car, the safety car in F1, uh, makes the move around. Um, can someone clarify what the, what, what the, what the rules are on qualifying? Because generally, when um, Alpha Sutton levels, it's, it's, a, it's a no overtaking during qualifying the rule, um, unless the other car is moving off the racing line. And I'm assuming that's not the case here, um, because there's some people doing it. There we go, so that McLaren coming back under. You can just see how, just how strong that slipstream is. Um, but you can look at this, a penalty, so not able to improve. So this will be the last lap for these GT3 drivers. At the minute it's Manadeo, uh, no, Mantegno, that's better, from Italy. Uh, he's cut that gap to the uh, G, to GR1s. Uh, so you just step back 13 and a half seconds, which is not a bad go. <coughs> Only 14 seconds off um, of Scorpio's uh, qualifying time. That's, that's not too shabby, to be fair, in uh, these GR3 cars. And I said the Lexus is a bit of a um, It's going to be the car to be chosen. So, uh, we can see they're the two fastest cars uh, here at Data. Uh, so it's uh, these are the guys that we uh, want to chase. It's main to the old Italy. It's uh, Maligator from the uh, United Kingdom. It's Nicky from Greece. It's Kingston from Portugal. Uh, not Kingston from Jamaica. Um, and that's Norway. Oh, that's Norway. So we've got a uh, KBM. Uh, we've got Cloud, and we've got Bobos. Uh, all in these. Uh, but, was, was their teammates. Uh, but in different cars, of course, we've got uh, uh, the boss for FSIs in the US, yes. Cloud 9 in the back, it's our Porsche 9 in the uh, And got uh, KBM in the uh, AMG G3. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so, no change for this. Uh, Matt, Matt's Neo into the pits. He's done. Uh, he gets essentially de facto pole for the GT3s. Um, that's where it puts him. Is he just doing a straight drive through or is he going to pull in to his pit box? It looks like it's just a pit to drive through. Yeah, it's a pit drive through, strangely. There we go. Um, and there is Cloud stealing it at the death with a 144 6. That's a stonker of a lap. Uh, lights on fuel in that Porsche. And I said the Porsche wasn't that strong around here. And he's just absolutely proved me wrong. Um, he's got an exceptional time out of that 911. And uh, I stand corrected already. Um, how you doing, Waz Joe? Um, so Kiko, so, right, I'm trying to work out who races for who. So, 
we know that uh, Boss uh, and uh, KBM and else? Cloud9 are FSR. Um, we know that Kiko is FTR. Um, yes, yeah, that's a good laugh, Cloud. You're, you're absolutely right, Evasion. Um, that's your boy there, and he's, uh, he's done it proud and stolen the GR3 uh, pole position, essentially. Um, it's not on row three, but the, the first thing he will see will be the back of a, a Group 1 car disappearing up the road like a rat up a drain pipe. So there we go. That is, uh, let's have a look at the classifieds. So there we have it. It's uh, Scorpio, Philo, Kiko and Corey. There you front two rows in the group ones then for the group threes it's cloud uh matt neo uh, maligator and kbm uh kingston and nikki with uh babos at the back in the mclaren uh but why a 146 one that's still exceptionally quick um all very very fast guys right so without further ado let's get an hour and a half of racing underway here at daytona Oh, we've got someone else joining uh, that was late, I'm assuming, so they'll go at the back. Um, it is Legion, uh, Revolution Racing Teams. Um, who, who, who are we cheering for here then, Justin? Who, who, are, you, who are your Revolution Racing Team boys? Uh, what car is Legion in as well? That'd be quite useful. So it's going to be a bit of a delay. It's going to be a slight uh, delay while we, the lobby is reset. Uh, it needs to be reset because I think Legion was late uh, and couldn't qualify. So it's going to have to be a, uh, a set by host grid to slot him in. I don't know what car he's in yet. We'll find out whether he's going to be. Um, I, 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 you should just be able to there you go, qualify and finish. There we go. Right, so... I don't need to, why they didn't need to leave the lobby you just reset the lobby just change the lobby settings and redo it but there we go we're going to do a brand new lobby instead how about that oh he's group one nice one nice one is that the same it can't be I nearly went into the wrong room. Sometimes this um, the lobby page takes ages to reset itself. It's a right pain in the butt. So we've gone from four to five a group one cars. Um, I'm assuming then Legion gets... Does he get slotted in on row three in front of, uh, sort of behind the other group ones? Or does he go get slotted in right at the back because he didn't set a qualifying time? Uh, that'll be interesting to know. Um, yes, it, it's a complicated one, that, not it? Because there's no doubt he's going to absolutely melt those guys pretty quickly. But, um, yeah. Apologies, family issues. No worries, Martin. No worries at all. Right, so we're in. Uh, we just need now that it's going to be reset. It's going to be set to uh, set by um, by host. That's the word I was looking for. Set by host. Um, I am keeping an eye on my Discord at the moment because. Uh, lobby 2 is due to be um, done by my esteemed colleague, uh, Cruentus. Uh, but he's had a couple of issues with a uh, microphone, which we've been trying to solve this afternoon. Um, well, I don't know. The, 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 the answer is, is he, is he going to be able to fix it? I don't know. He's on the, he hasn't replied to me. So we spoke before the race started. Um, about five past... Yeah, about five past we spoke last and he was going away to have a look at it and see what he could do with fiddling around with it 
Um, hopefully he gets it sorted. Um, back a group one, okay. I suppose it makes sense because. Uh, oh no, it's fine. listen, crack on, mate. Crack on. It is what it is. Sometimes other things uh, take precedence. Um, yeah. Well, just, yeah. So uh, yeah. So hopefully, hopefully, Corentus can get his problem solved um, because if uh, it's going to put a massive well, that's it. It'd be a massive delay on lobby two. Um, because I'll still be here in lobby one when that starts at eight o'clock, uh, which is right now 15 minutes. So, uh, yeah, fix it. Um, hopefully, hopefully he'll get done now. I would have, I would have thought he will. Um, the back of the back of that would be more interesting. I think here though, I think the, 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 with the carnage you usually see, um, the, 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 so basically Daytona and, and Monza. Um, Daytona, Monza, and um, Barcelona are the three tracks where Turn One just seems to be an absolute smash fest um, at the start of every race. And it's just, it, I think it's you, you're starting at relatively high speed into Turn One. You cold tires here as well. I think if you've got to contend with with uh, a gaggle of of Group Three cars in front of you, I think that could be. Um, absolutely uh, insane. Uh, yeah, I, I am. He is going to keep me in the loop, mate. So um, if if I hear if I don't hear anything, I'll let you know. But I think we're leaving it as if I don't if I don't hear, he's good. And uh, let me message him quickly while uh, while we wait for this to set up. Uh, all right, talk about yourself. I can't type and talk at the same time. Um, I'm not very good at multitasking. There we go, tappity tappity tappity. Uh, I should probably mention that I will be. Perhaps if I use uh, actual letters. <coughs> there we go. He is massaged. I wasn't planning on doing two today, but if I have to, it, it is what it is. Uh, now I know we can delay it, that's all good. We could talk about the settings, couldn't we, while we're waiting? So, it is a uh, 90 minute race, as you can see there. The weather is custom and it's going to be random. Starting the afternoon with a times 10 um, time dilation. Rolling start of set by host. Um, BOP on uh, with some settings options. I think that's just going to be brake balance. Um, they must use the medium and the soft racing tyres. Um, they can't use notches, obviously. Um, and they have to have no, no, no limit on the fuels by category because obviously, yeah. You wouldn't be able to bring a car in, would you? Uh, weak on the shortcut penalty. Penalty, uh, correct, uh, correct vehicle course after uh, after uh, collision. Uh, I usually like that off, but uh, I think the other thing, but it's, uh, it's on. Um, that dreaded pit lane cutting penalty. Um, hate it, but uh, it's, uh, it's a great leveler, is that one. Uh, flag rules on. Um, the other penalties are off wall, car. Um, ghosting off as well. Ghosting, stupid. Um, there should be a little bit of jeopardy. Driving line assist is off and also drive, um, as you would expect, is off. So, we are ready to go. I'm aware that I was looking at it and you couldn't see it. But, uh, right, let's uh, go with display all. Uh, and we do what we usually do. We usually go around the midfield. So, we're, I'm going to go from a view of the cloud there, the first of the team. Uh, the group three cars. So you'll see straight away. Watch how quickly the group ones disappear. Um, the gap already opening quite significantly before even reached the line. And boom, they are away, and we are racing from this rolling start into turn one. Scorpio leads the way from Philo Engineering. Kiko 
in third. Legion uh, couldn't set a qualified time, so he is going to be chasing these guys down. Um, bear in mind, they're all starting on. Uh, they're not super, super cold, the tyres, because they would have had that uh, the, the, the lap we didn't see, the fictional lap, shall we say, uh, before they uh, did their rolling start. Already look at the gap between these group ones and the group threes. Um, let's have a look at the group threes, how they're uh, faring at this stage. Cloud already pulling out a bit of a gap on the Italian. 1.4 seconds is difficult. But look at this battle behind. Everybody else is absolutely uh, on it. And watch this now with this introduction. Watch what a difference this makes. And I'll tell you what, he's going to be pretty pleased, Cloud, uh, that he's not involved in this because everybody, and it looks like the boss, if he loses that slipstream, it could be absolutely devastating for him. And that is the Mustang trying to make a move up the inside of uh, Kingston up ahead. Um, but he's decided uh, against it. Clips the wall there, that's going to cost him to head into the bus stop chicane. And it's all very, very close. Have to give each other just that little bit of room. Switch in, swap in, moving around. Hey, the Phil, how you doing? Uh, but here we go, slipstream again. All very jostling for position. And you can see there the Mustang just sliding on through. Trying to hold that inside line. Getting tucked in now between uh, the uh, K, uh, KBM's um, GT3. And uh, it managed to make its way around the entire field. That is way overtaken from the Mustang. Watch just how many cars it gets through here. Um, that's, that's his third overtake, fourth overtake, fifth overtake coming up. And just every time he moves up, like, just picking up the next bit of slippery up the road and just slingshotting himself through uh, up into um, essentially second for these group uh, three cars. Uh, Kiko has taken the lead of this race up into first place. Already a second clear of Philo Engineering back in second. Uh, 1.8 to Scorpio. Scorpio really brings down in that early stage and uh, getting dropped by those two, the uh, the Frenchman and the Englishman out in the lead. Uh, 1.1 seconds to Corey and Legion has started to drop back. And the, the problem you've got with um, with, with Daytona is once you lose that slipstream, particularly if the car you're chasing has some, it is almost impossible to get back involved and pick it up. Um, so, key at the moment, oh, that, that's, I mean, that's, that's not so great for Corey because he's not going to be able to chase down Scorpio. However, it is going to push him a bit close to Legion. So Legion will be happy to see Corey serve that penalty because it will close that gap and give him an opportunity to maybe work together to try and go out the road. And that's key. That's what these group one cars need to do. They've got to work together um, to close the gap on their rivals up ahead. You can see already just how much of a difference it's made uh, to that uh, front three. Right, so Philo is 1.5 seconds at the moment behind Giga, uh, with Scorpio just 1.1 behind him. They're not going to want these gaps to get any bigger. They're going to want to try and close up. Um, Kiko is going to want to, to open up as quickly as possible and move away as quickly as possible. Um, Scorpio and Figo here um, we want to work together, just bumping each other up the road and just trying to close that gap to the front of and not allow them the, uh, the benefit of, of clear air to work with. Uh, Cloud still dominating the GT3 racer in this uh, 911, the car that I said was shit at Daytona. Um, I, still, I still insist it is, it's not the best car at Daytona, but in the tight cloud knows how to drive good. He knows how to drive good. Uh, 2.8 seconds, his current lead over uh, Nicky. Now everybody, we'll have a look at the size of the floor, the size of the floor I think everybody started on, oh they haven't, not everybody started on those softs. So, uh, the front five I think all will have, no they haven't. Um, Philo's on the medium, so actually Philo, well those 2.4 off the back of Kiko, he's on the medium compound tyres. He's got Scorpio all over the back of him, he's on the softs. Uh, so Philo the only one of the Group 1 drivers on those mediums. Not a bad shout actually, you can hang on um, in that sort of top 2, top 3. Um, potentially, potentially there is a, <laughs> a, a, a push for first in it for him on the soft tyres when everybody else has to use mediums. Um, so Cloud leads the way 
uh, on those softs. It's Nicky's on the softs. Uh, Malagates are currently running third in that GT2 class um, on the medium compound tyres in that Lexus. Uh, he's got uh, KBM also on the mediums just behind him. Kingston on the softs. Uh, mediums for Manton Mayo. Uh, the Italian drops are right down to 11th position uh, with Bubba Boss at the Bubba back on the number mediums. Uh, that's how it's looking thus far. Uh, and you can see how quickly these guys are burning through their fuel. Uh, Kiko still leads the way uh, by 3.5, uh, 3.6 seconds even. Um, Scorpio Ivan now ahead of Filo. To be expected, he's on the soft compound tyre. So he is going to be able to get that additional grip coming out of corners. And it, it, it makes a massive difference, particularly for the field section, having that soft, the rubber. Uh, but you can see there with the slipstream, Corral comes Philo. And it just goes to show that the, 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 the slipstream, the drag that you get here, the drag reduction you get being in behind another car right here, can make a huge, huge difference to your... Um, your speed but you can see where now look this is where you can see the difference in the tires is once they get into this tricky twisty infield section this is where scorpio seems to have the edge uh, a little bit he can break that a little bit later um, he can get on the power that a little bit sooner um a little nudge in the back of the field uh, a little bit a little bit uh, back out onto the tri oval they go. Now, what does Philo do? Does he tuck in? Uh, I imagine he will. You won't, the, the tricky thing here is you want to be close enough to get that drag reduction. But you don't want to be so close that you're making the move before the bus stops you can. You want to really be making that close in after you, uh, the, the exit of the chicane. So that's when you start to push and close the gap to make the overtake before you get into the one. Um, the problem being, of course, if you make the overtake before you get into the bus stop, you're essentially just giving it back up. But uh, a little mistake coming out there for Pino, and that is a half second penalty, uh, which is going to put him right off the back of the actually, and uh, make things a little bit harder. He's on the medium as well, so uh, it's not going to be easy to, to close back in. Right, let's uh, move off of these um, Group 1 cars for a bit. Uh, let's have a look at Cloud. Cloud is still doing the business uh, quite successfully in that line level. Uh, already, you can see we're really behind the uh, leaders. Uh, 2.9 seconds ahead of Nicky R88. He's in that Mustang, um, repping the American muscle here at Daytona. Uh, but uh, Nicky's got a nice little gap out. Um, 1.9 seconds ahead of Maligator, um, who is essentially pulling along Kingston and uh, KBM at the moment. Uh, the three of them battling it out for essentially third in this uh, Group 3 class. Look how quickly KBM in that GT3 now. Had a good exit out of the bus stop chicane. He's picking up the draft from Kingston ahead. And it's just going to help slingshot him out of that banked left-hander as it takes him down to the start finish line. Through he goes into the carry the penalty as well. He's slow right up through that penalty line. He's not close enough to make the move on Malagator, but he will be significantly closer now than he was uh, just a couple of quarters ago. Of as here he is closing in now. He's got to gap down to half a second. Kingston, who uh, just lost out to the Norwegian driver, uh, is staying in that mix half a second back from that fight. And that's the fight currently for second, uh, no, sorry, for third in the Group 3 class. Uh, Mantineo. Uh, 3.7 seconds and already, already look, the group ones are coming baby. Uh, we knew it was going to be pretty quick before they caught them um, and here it is, they're coming already. Um, and the person who's going to see that first is the base. Um, as I said earlier, the, uh, the rules for lapping are quite simple. The slower cars remain on the racing line while the faster cars 
um, go zoom on through uh, and, and treat it like a normal overtake. Um, from the perspective of the difference, the difference between that and the normal overtake is they're not that big for them. It's not their race. Uh, it's a different race for them. But uh, when you can see there, that's, uh, that is Scorpio coming through. And it won't be long before you see the field Kicking up sparks. <coughs> so, uh, it's 90 minutes of racing. We've had just over 10 minutes so far. And this is how it looks. Uh, Kiko leads away. Now, five seconds clear of Scorpio Ivan. Uh, who is running well. And they're, of course, they're trying to navigate away from the traffic. So, we won't see like uh, deranged lap times yet. Um, because they have 31 six, six. Actually, it's got to stay like that because I like the 666 thing. So 31 six, 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 this has to stay. The only thing, the only thing that can be close with is a 130.06. Uh, otherwise, it's got to stay 666. Um, Phenomenal. Difficult place to, to encounter traffic all through the infield. Uh, but he navigates it quite well, does he? Yeah. But you can see that it's uh, it, it's opening up the gaps out in front. It's four and a half seconds to Kiko and Scorpio. Uh, another four and a half back to Philo Engineering, who's now uh, uh, some of his traffic. But so in a somewhat easier way uh, because it's on the try over. Uh, Two point four seconds back to Corey, and already seconds ahead of Legion. Has Legion had some sort of problem? Because he really has fallen away. Way, 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 way. Uh, his fastest lap was uh, 34.8. So uh, struggling a little bit. That, that's the thing because he hasn't got any slipstream from the other group one cars. As soon as you get kind of hung out to dry, it's over. Uh, Cloud Nine into the pits already burning through uh, that fuel very, very quickly. Uh, Nikki in. KBM is in. Kingston's in. Maligator is in. Uh, Mataneo, really, really good job looking after his fuel. He has been fuel saving like an absolute demon. And uh, what has that allowed him to do? That's allowed him to take the lead in this Group 3 class uh, with Babos. Uh, not too far behind, 2.1 seconds. And he's got a couple of laps where he's got to come in. But it won't be long. Oh no, it won't. It won't be long before Babos is in. Um, changing out of field. So Matineau in a really, really good position on those mediums. He's making the most of the medium tyres for as long as he can. We can see that those on the softs uh, can't make them out. Um, as I said, they've, uh, they've got significant wear. But um, Matineau is doing a really good job. Uh, the field. You can see there, he's got so much more field. Um, which is going to throw them out of sync for pity. Um, but I think that's a good thing. If you're, if you're on a different construction than everyone else around you, you know what you're doing. You, because they've already picked, you've got a rough idea what they're doing. But they haven't got a clue what your situation is. Um, they don't know why you're still out. They don't know how you're managing to stay out so long. Uh, they don't know when you're going to pick next. It, it really does um, start to throw an expander in. And, and often it can make the other driver start to second guess themselves tripping over to try and uh, to try and find find the answer uh, but it's going to be a, at least uh, at least two or three hours before uh, Montenegro thinks about coming in no change for the group ones although the pit window is fast approaching a 31 one six oh I thought I said we couldn't change and that time he wasn't listening to me he did do what he wants he does what he wants because he's Kiko and that's what Kiko does um, 6.9 uh, 6, no, 6.9 seconds of Scorpio um, another lap maybe uh, he, he might come in the end of this lap but uh, maybe there's another lap in it for him uh, Scorpio's done a good job looking after fuel Philo's done a brilliant job looking after fuel there uh, Corey even better uh, Legion Kiko uh, has absolutely melted it but of course the uh, the downside to, to pulling away like that is you burn through your fuel a lot faster um, and you will have to pit 
Um, as the round is going in now, uh, it looks like he is. Yeah, he's a kicker into the pits from the lead of the race. So Scorpio will come through. He's got another lap in him uh, into the braking zone. He goes at turn one uh, now, and he will turn the off the race. Uh, we'll have a look at the pit loss time, actually. It'll be quite interesting to see just how long it takes to get through. Um, as we see the stream through Scorpio through, Philo through, Corey also through. So you can see there just how long it takes to get to this box in the first place. This is weird because you can break it there and straight away. Uh, Lando Novice like it. Like it a lot. Very clever play on words. Uh, filling up uh, with fuel. How far is he filling? To the brim, my friend. To the brim, says Kiko. Uh, he is just as come out ahead of Legion. Uh, yes, he does. Uh, why is Legion so far back? Um, did he pit? Well, no, it would suggest that he didn't. So he, he had a 145.3. I think he may have crashed. Uh, that's a, you know, a 10 second loss, 11 second loss uh, for Legion. So, Matineo is in, or Mantinho. Mantinho is in to the pits uh, from the lead of GT3 class. Um, that promotes uh, up to sixth position uh, Nicky in that Mustang, uh, who is ahead of Cloud. Interestingly, um, on the same. Uh, on, did he stay on the same tyres he was already using when he pit? What does that look like to me? Or is he just, uh, oh, did he stay out? No, he, 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 must have, he must have pit, because there's no way he's still out. Um, so he's pit, but left the uh, left tyres on. Uh, he, oh, didn't load settings. Um, yeah, that would, that would be a problem. Um, I don't know what, uh, what tuning settings were allowed. Um, but I'm assuming you haven't got the, the ride height and, and the bits and pieces that you would have hoped for. Um, so yeah, that, that, will, that will cost you a, a shit ton of time. Uh, especially around here. Um, because if you look at the other if you lose some screw, you're screwed. <coughs> Apologies, I've got a cough. Right, so Nikki currently leads the way for the GR3 class. Um, Optic State on the same tyres that they um, that they started the race on, rather than put fresh ones on. It will save a little bit of time in the pit stop, but uh, they're not going to last as long as I think they will last. Um, now the thing is that the fuel is burning down pretty quickly, but uh, it is not a time and the track's cooling, so maybe the tyres, as the track is cooling, just last that little bit longer. At the minute, it's a battle, nice ding dong battle. That's a great shot. That's a great shot. Uh, cloud all over, all over the back of that Mustang, trying to find a way through in at that Porsche 911. Having a little sneaky peek up the inside every time. And it, uh, the gap uh, was left open, and uh, Nicky opening the door and saying, You want to come through now? Was there a touch there? Let's have another little look. We want to get a we want to get a view from the front of the car. Um, it didn't look to me like they did touch. We'll have a look here. Oh, there was a little bit of contact. I'm not entirely sure if that was enough contact though to, to cause the spin uh, that, that we did. Listen. <laughs> What we'll do this time, we have a look at the inputs. So I'm hoping to go down and look at the, at the inputs and see if he's uh, it's got on the gas a little bit too soon. In fact, I, I think it's a combination. Um, it looks to me like a little combination of um, getting on the power, um, you know, probably about the right time, but where the car was unsettled with the touch, um, the, the, the steering wheel wasn't straight as you'd like, and I think that, uh, that caused the problem. So, uh, Nicky now 5.5 seconds back from uh, Cloud 
Mark in sixth. Um, some of the students are probably going to have a look at him before. Uh, he is 1.2 seconds clear of a moment against Ward and Kingston, who are uh, duking it out at the moment. But it's side by side racing. It's the Jewish and Mark. Freeway battle going on, but uh, KPM involved in that as well. So let's, uh, let's zoom this out. Let's go with Kingston. So it's Kingston, Malligator, KPM all fighting for that eighth position, uh, which, is uh, which is that's where the battle is about to occur in this class. Uh, you've got to bear in mind the, they are out of sync now, which is why. Back in 11th is 5.4 or something now with the boss. Um, and another four point five. But interestingly, um, lots more floor aboard, so we should see the boss with one through the That joke can never be, never be, can get wrong, is it? Uh, it's not for me, it's not for me. Maligator, Kingston, that, and they're closing actually, they're closing on uh, Nicky. We do the, uh, let's, let's, have, let's do the, uh, which one is the next one? This shot, we have the Jaeger Special, um, as it's known, uh, over the shoulder, over that rear wheel. Um, the gap between them actually is closing. Uh, only six tenths, Malagator, uh, who's got past KDM, yeah, closing as they get into the, to the, the first six tenths of one. And it's becoming a four way battle now. For this, which is essentially second uh, in this class, very close. I, I genuinely thought that we were going to have to look at Navigator chucking one up the inside from about six miles back, but uh, he, he didn't. Uh, but losing that position to uh, I think it's a one coming through. Uh, but has that compromised? Has that compromised Nikki a little bit? Um, you can see there that Navigator right up on the back of that Mustang and crawling all over the American muscle, repping the Brits up the inside. Does he make the move? There is a little bit of contact. Nothing doing with that though. Um, nothing wrong with that at all. Now, the problem is now, of course, now Malagetti is now giving up that slipstream to that car behind. So Nicky now picking up the slipstream, uh, giving some to Kingston. Kingston's loving it. KBM looks like he's had a problem. Uh, see if we can see what that problem is. He's going very slowly there. So, uh, yeah, it looks like they had him in the right jet flag. Uh, I'm not sure. So, uh, yeah, no problem there. For uh, KBM. I'm looking at his name and I still forgot it. <laughs> Little problem there for KBM. Let's take him out of this fight here. And look at that, that's the group one coming through. And, uh, that very nearly went horribly wrong. Kingston was looking at making the move. Into the pits goes uh, Nicky. Um, probably could have done a couple more laps, but uh, clearly felt that the tyres. Oh, and that's all kinds of wrong. All kinds of wrong from Kingston. Let's have a little look and see how Kingston managed to, uh, to turn uh, what was very nearly a great overtake into uh, abject misery. Around the outside into turn one is a brave, brave move taken there. And you can see that he just couldn't hold that in any way. We'll have a look from, we'll have a look from this scale here. Yeah. And you can see I've uh, There we go, press the replay button, you can see it better. You can see here, making that move, um, had a little look around the outside, gets around the outside, into turn one, forces uh, Malico to stay on the inside, you can just see, um, it just, too quick into turn one, and, um, yeah, this is that position, so we have to work, and that now, of course, is going to be set into off, and Malikator, it's just how you take the turn. To be fair, that's how I take the turn as well. Just break in the wrong place. Hope to hell I survive. Um, 
talking to breaking in all the wrong places. And who wants to hear what happened to me on Friday night? Um, I don't, as I said to you guys, anyone that knows that I don't race very often. Um, and, 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 and not in any serious capacity. Um, but I decided to book Friday night something from the Open Joiner as a short four race series um, over the next four five days. Um, having a race in GR4. And uh, I picked a car and I got into a race and I qualified okay and I was doing all right. I'd settle in and I'd have a crash. I think it was like five or six, seven, something like that. And um, it's, it's Lagos. And I've uh, slammed on the anchors for the uh, Center S. Um, only for my PlayStation 2 boot me immediately back to the home screen and put me in offline mode. Um, turns out what happened was my uh, wire that I was on the PlayStation 2 um, runs under the so when I drive here, basically I should have the cable enough, not to take it out of the PlayStation, just to remove the contents from the contents of the PS. And that kicked me out of the house. It's a bit devastating. Because I've spent not an inconsiderable amount of time practicing that kind of thing. So there we go. This is why I don't race, because I'm not going to do Anyway. So, leading the way, it's Kiko from France. He's 12 seconds clear, and he's driving so fast, and I'm sure he um, Yeah, he's doing a very, very good job, he's Kiko, out in the lead of this race. Uh, Scorpio Ivan, um, still in second. He's got a little bit of front end um, aerodynamic damage, but nothing that's causing huge problems in terms of lap times. Kiko, of course, at 130.9. Uh, looking pretty darn quick. Uh, Philo Engineering, the French powerhouse, yeah, indeed. <coughs> uh, so Philo is currently running in third. Uh, he has, he's run the Mini Combatars, he doesn't need to run the Mini anymore, should he choose not to. Uh, going to be a lot of refueling, we're on lap uh, 18, we're not, gonna, uh, we're not even half an hour into the race yet. Um, and we're all thinking about when the second good stop's going to be for some of these guys. Um, now, Vilo did a quite a good job looking after the fuel early on, so a bit of momentum from those around. So might actually start to see some benefit from that over the next couple of um, stints between stuff. Uh, Corey, GT35. Uh, he's from Canada, don't you know? Uh, basically, Canada is basically American Britain. Um, it's the best way to do it. So it's all the good things about America and all the good things about Britain mashed into somewhere incredibly fucking good. <laughs> I can't think of another way to describe Canada. Um, lovely place. I'm not, I'm not saying that. It's lovely. Uh, a good friend of mine immigrated out to Canada. Um, kind of, kind of, sold up here and uh, moved my family out to um, New Paris, which is where he now lives. Uh, and it's cold. Uh, he lives in this little village, you can't really swim or something. Uh, but it's like minus 40. <laughs> but the pictures look cool. Uh, Legion is um, being lapped. Legion is being lapped by uh, that is Scorpio coming up behind Legion. Uh, Legion was late to the party, uh, didn't get his settings on the car, and struggling with pace a little bit uh, because of that. It is what it is. Excuse me. Yeah, it is what it is, folks. Sometimes we, 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 we mess up. And this is what happens. We have to race for a long time with the wrong settings. Um, so that's your group ones, not real much of a change there. We did see that Bobos was in the puppets um, from, uh, I think it was ninth, he's about tenth or moving down that order. Uh, so from the back, uh, KBM91, or KBEM, however you pronounce it, uh, is uh, currently running in the 12th place, uh, not long out of the pits. This is the first hot lap. Uh, since that pit stop. Uh, Kingston um, in the same situation. Uh, Kingston looking pretty good. Uh, the boss just uh, 
Uh, keeps them from Portugal, 6.9 seconds up on the road. Um, he's got a while before he's going to stop him again. Uh, Nicky um, in that Mustang uh, was originally put in a uh, cloud under a bit of pressure, but actually keep the cloud at bay. And uh, it's found to a few laps later on now. Uh, it's 4.1 seconds behind Malagator, with, uh, with a lot of work to do to get himself back into the Group 3 Top 3. Talking of Group 3 Top 3, there's one of them, it's Malagator. He's uh, 5.3 seconds behind Cloud, um, and he's called that because he's white and fluffy and full of water, apparently. Um, don't hold me to that, I, I don't have the, the, the signed up for David's that fact, but um, it's a good, good, good enough guess for me. 2.6 seconds behind the Italian, um, Mantino, uh, who is leading the charge for the GT4, uh, GT3 class. But does have a little bit of a front aero damage, which uh, is going to be affecting the items. Um, who, the, 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 this, this is the one downside with having, uh, not having, um, not we had on sport, we had all that kind of black delta data that we could access. Um, wouldn't it be cool if we could have all that again for um, broadcasters? Uh, and then we can see who is the fastest G2 car. Uh, 45.9 for Mandino. Cloud's going to 45.4. That's faster. Uh, 45.9 for Malibu. Nikki, I can't see what he's doing this. Uh, they haven't done it for a while. A 46.3 for KBM. And Babos, uh, I can't see his fastest either. So, I think we have to assume then that Cloud, that 45.4, is currently the fastest G R performance uh, of G R3 car on the Zero H track. Uh, as we head into uh, the second 30 minutes of the race, uh, we're one third done. How about that? One third done. Um, if you are currently watching, uh, can you explain to me why you have not yet liked this broadcast? Uh, jump in, please. Uh, Give it a like, give it a share, uh, to the world and uh, get involved in the comments. Tell us what, uh, what you're expecting from this race. Um, yeah, well, what do you think is going to happen over the next um, hour? Sorry, but Brian Brainfall, what happens with Brainfall? It's what happens when we're up just before the work. Uh, and I like to know me, you know, the truth of it. Uh, you were waiting for me. Right, so, uh, Kiko has uh, been in the pits, uh, and we knew how. We now have a new race leader, uh, with a little bit of front end damage there. Philo Engineering in the gear. Uh, yeah, Philo Engineering is uh, in the lead. 14.9 uh, seconds, we're going to have to stop. Um, Hits. Um, Kiko uh, should at that stage regain the lead in place. But bear in mind, of course, that Fila has already run those really good bad times. Uh, everybody else still, or everyone else only in the in the uh, in the group one class. So he still has to do that. Uh, Corey running a third, 25 seconds back. Um, now it's 40 seconds off of Fila. Um, the Fino should still be uh, in second place, kick on the battery, but it's a possible catch up for the as it stands. The question of course is going to be is what is the gap between Kiko and Filo um, after that pit window. 3.6 seconds back to Scorpio. Um, Scorpio was looking pretty racy earlier, he's on those millions now. So get those millions out of the way, I think the earlier you, you get them done and dusted, particularly if you're not feeling um, the, the pace on them, um, you know, you, you, you've got to kind of offset the benefit, don't you? Yes, you get some longevity in comparison to the soft compact tyres, but how much time are you losing for that longevity? And at what point does it just become um, counterproductive to be running medium tyres and actually going off pretty, uh, 
more. Uh, 53 seconds to lead you. Uh, Toyota couldn't get settings up in the time. Toyota time in that uh, hybrid Porsche 9. Uh, Cloud for so long led this GT3 uh, class is still uh, doing so, or he's doing so again, should I say. Uh, and enjoying a quite comfortable uh, 7.4 second lead over Navigator. Um, now, in terms of pitting, uh, Cloud has uh, tyres in a pretty decent position, but not a great deal of fuel on board. Uh, Navigator, more fuel on board, but tyres that um, are rope, to say the least. So, um, they're going to have to pit around the same time but for different reload. Both the fuel, but for, certainly only one needs to get four tyres. This is where the cloud decides to uh, keep the tyres of that R on, or to take them off. Uh, Cold waters, go, Corey, go. Um, Corey's doing all right, 27 seconds. The gap is opening up a little bit to those front so it's, it's, you know, it's running third, which is good. Uh, the question is whether, through the pit window, he can catch Vinny. Um, at the moment, he's got a little bit of pressure uh, to try and put on him when Fido does finally go for pits. He's got to, be, uh, got to try and do it. Uh, Scorpio Ivan uh, is still fifth. Right. Uh, that's Nicky in the pits. Are in that Mustang, uh, as is KBM uh, coming in now. Uh, but Boss will close the gap slightly, uh, but he's 47 seconds back, so struggling a little bit. And, uh, no worries, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Moses. I very much appreciated your comments on this uh, blowy Sunday evening here in the UK. Uh, back doors open. It's not, it's not super cold, but it is really quite windy today. Um, a good way to describe it. Uh, right, so uh, Babos at the Babak in the McLaren. Uh, 19 seconds back, now KB's out of the pits. Nikki also out of the pits. They're separated by 13 seconds. 8.2 seconds up the road is Mantineo from Italiano. Uh, he is 16 uh, seconds behind Kingston. Uh, five minutes. Five and a half minutes behind the current race leader in the group runs. Uh, Kingston is 11.2 behind the Malagator, so no battles going on there. Um, 8.1 seconds behind Cloud, but Cloud in the pit, our Malagator's got in as well. So, uh, is Kingston going to be another new uh, de facto leader? Uh, although he's got a cover as well, so no one won't. So, where is a Mantineo in relation to these guys? He's just sweeping around that banked final corner. Uh, Cloud is in the pit box. The tyres are in. The fuel is going in now. Malagator just stopping tyres getting coming on now. So, there is the Italian. He comes round into the braking zone for turn one. You've got to remember it's agonising because um, you've got to go essentially all the long way round before uh, you find out whether you've managed to sneak out. I don't think. He has, it looks like Cloud has got out ahead, uh, but it's only 4.3 seconds. He's on those soft compounds, Mantineo. Um, a lot less fuel, but um, bear in mind how long the tyres are lasting. Mm, I don't know if it's, uh, if it's the right choice. We, will, we are yet to see. Um, it's getting to that point in the race. You start to reach towards that big old where it kind of sells, there's no real battles on the racetrack. Everyone's kind of settling in um, after sort of five minutes of a frantic um, jostling for position. Uh, and now it's about consolidation. It's about putting in those consistent laps where you, you literally try to stay within a couple of tenths of your lap every single time. You churn them out one after the other, one after the other, hoping that you're taking little chunks out of the car's head and opening up the gap to the cars behind that. Um, yeah, so, uh, Cloud at the moment though is 
uh, dominating the uh, GT3 class uh, with that four and a half second move. Um, yeah, really good driver for Kerry Rollins. Uh, managing that pace very well at the moment. Uh, not, clearly not over pushing the car, not over driving it, not trying to uh, you know make a 10, 15, 20 second gap when it's just not necessary. Just doing it, just doing it. What, what is Luca doing? We can't even manage that. So. And, that yeah, and that's the thing, you know, that you save your tyres, you save your fuel a little bit, keep that gap around that four second mark. Don't worry too much. Only start to think about sort of pushing it if it starts to come down. Feel them bearing down behind you, but the moment you can just say you're not, you're not chasing anyone now. You're you're being uh, the chased. Talking of being the chased. So Kiko, 24 seconds clear. He's going to have to pit um, a lot lot sooner than the cars around him, though. Um, does anyone else find it really annoying when people join a lobby where the race is halfway through? Um, Particularly if they're not supposed to be there. I right, tell you what really annoys me. You know, it's clear what the lobby is because it says it in the description. So it's clear that there is a that there is a particular race going on. Um, now we know that when people join a lobby, it can cause some instability. So the best thing to do is not to join a lobby for something you have no business being. Uh, now you'll know from the name whether you're involved in it or not. Um, so it really annoys you. It may be they're supposed to be here, but they're, they're not, so probably not. It's, it, it's just, there are many things that piss me off. I mean, the older I get, the more I want to stuff about that things. Um, it's just an old man thing, but uh, that is one in particular that's quite high on my list of, of, of peeves. Uh, I learn to read people, learn to read. Right, Kiko leading the way. Uh, anyway, 24 seconds clear of Figo. That's about what they, you need. To get in and out, uh, 24 minutes, 27, 27 seconds at Daytona, um, there or thereabouts, depending on fuel and uh, whatever else you're doing. Um, so, need to not, not going to necessarily have a free pit stop. He'd love to, he'd love to have a free pit stop over Fido. And why does it look like one of Fido's lights is broken? Uh, just the angle, I think, yeah, it's just the angle. Um, but yeah, he looked like a broken light. Now, Corey, eight seconds back. Um, but he's going to pit before Fido, so that gap's going to open up. Um, Scorpio Ivan uh, is 4.5 behind Corey Link. Very similar in terms of fuel. Um, Scorpio on those medium tyres, so going to have to work a little bit harder than Corey um, if he's trying to close that gap. Uh, in terms of lap time, Scorpio is um, consistently in those high 32s. Um, there or thereabouts on those on those uh, medium tyres by the looks of things. Uh, Corey in the uh, low to mid 32s, so a little bit quicker on those soft, but of course um, using a bit more fuel um, or let, has less fuel on board, and of course will have less tyres. So it, it, I wouldn't be surprised to see Scorpio just start to take a little bit out of that over the next um, eight to ten. Uh, and of course, Legion is, uh, is struggling. Uh, Kiko's actually he's on fire. Oh, fire! Oh, as Joe. Somebody get me a bucket because that boy is on fire. Uh, right. Uh, Cloud still leads this GT2 class Legion into the pits for a done stop with zero three on board. Uh, so that will be a useful time to stop. Them. Uh, Cloud is uh, leading this GT2 class by four. Uh, the Italian Mantino, uh, 4.4 seconds uh, back, as we know. Um, but a nice big gap, actually, to, to Malagator in third, about 3.6. Um, looks like Mantino, with that 45.3, is the fastest. Uh, yeah, just the fastest uh, GR3 out there. I'm just looking to see if anyone's going any quicker. They have not. They have not. Count the quick close. 4.53304 Cloud and a 4.53322 for Mandino. It's a difference of eight kids. Do math, stay in school. Um, so Malligator uh, is not quite as uh, as a round 45.2 there just been put in. Missed that. 
The mother gator's on a 45, 2 9 The mother gator's a fast now. Shut up, Andy, you're talking shit. Uh, do we have a sub 45 with a low fuel and a slipstream in these duty crews? I think I've asked a lot of them. Um, I've asked you to show you essentially three times off. Um, your very best lap at the moment, um, alligator. Um, and at this stage, it is quite, uh, it's quite difficult. He's magical. Willem, Willem Garnier. Willem, you pronounce Willem. Willem. Um, he, he is magical. He is magical. There we go. There's magical Kiko. 25 seconds clear. I'll put the for you. Uh, Jim, Jim. Uh, we've got a bit of 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 a so he's still going to try for that a little bit of time, but uh, no time left to do so. And we'll be pitting at the end of this lap. That should should put Philo there or thereabouts in the middle of this race. Um, with some time before Philo's got to get in there uh, around uh, cloud. Uh, he's lapping again. So it's lap 30 for uh, the big boys out in the front. It's lap 26 for the... Uh, the little boys in the rear. Uh, oh, so Kiko's in the pits. Um, this is interesting. Not in the pit box yet. Here comes Philo. Is Philo about to take the lead of this race? Rounding that bank. A sweeping left hander uh, that slingshots you down to the start finish line. Kiko just pulling up into the box. Tyres are coming off. Uh, on they go. The jacks go down. The fuel goes in. And Philo Engineering takes the lead of this race. Um, how big a gap now? How big a gap is the hunker hunker burning question? Uh, so here comes Kiko now out of the pits. It is 7.8 seconds. It's going to be another uh, 7, 8, 9 laps. This is 7 laps. Before we see Figo thinking about a pit stop. So, um, yeah. A little bit of a while yet for Figo to, if he can. Uh, you've, got, you've got to bear in mind that Figo's good this time. Uh, he's in the 31s. Kiko with a 30.6. Oh, crazy, quick. crazy, crazy fast. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of work to do thus far. Right, Dio. Moving swiftly on. <coughs> right, Corey is now only 3.6 before Kiko, uh, but not in any of the news. So once Corey comes into the pits in about two, two laps time, uh, that gap will open up significantly. Uh, Scorpio as well, uh, pitting in about three or four laps. Oh, three. Three, like I'm saying. Um, Chav, three or four. Um, it, <laughs> slightly digress, but it does, it does uh, amaze me. Actually. It's only the moment. So it's incredibly dangerous. It's no two minutes, but uh, incredibly dangerous. But there's a lot of non-native speakers that have a better grasp of English than most teenagers in London. Just, just let that thought sink in. You were born several thousand miles away uh, and spent your entire life speaking a different language. And you come to a country where the teenagers are worse at speaking the language they grew up with than you are. Sometimes it makes me feel ashamed to be British. Uh, but, this, this is where we were teenagers, we couldn't begin. I uh, talked like idiots as well, and no one really mentioned it. Uh, but there we go. We did have meetings in it. Anyway, we were talking about Corey. I can't ask Corey. It's a car. It's cool. Well, no, it doesn't, it doesn't really get properly dark in the daytime. Because even, even through the nighttime cycle, 
it is lit up like a Christmas tree in Trafalgar Square. Um, absolutely buzzing with lights all over the place. Uh, and Legion, um, well I mean Legion's still with the lead back, it's still ahead of, of the rest of it. It could be worse Legion, it could be behind these guys. <coughs> so, excuse me. So Cloud has been into the pits, that uh, allows Kingston to be uh, another leader, even if it is only briefly, uh, for a lap and a half or two. Um, uh, Kingston will go into the pits and we should see him put back out. Um, uh, it is Cloud running in 7th position, but soon will be back first in those GT3s with uh, uh, Malignator just 2.4 seconds behind. But, of course, very different pit strategies and uh, Malignator on the tyres not looking uh, wonderful. And it looks to me like Malignator went into the pits, kept the tyres he had and didn't change them out. And I'm wondering whether that's viable to do on the soft. I can understand doing it on the mediums, maybe. I think doing it on the soft shows incredibly bravery. Uh, Mantineo uh, running in ninth position. Uh, well, in, in, in eighth now, because Kingston's just gone in. Uh, seventh now, because Kingston's just gone in. Um, Nicky is uh, going to come through. Um, it's been damn close now. I think they've been coming through. Um, in that uh, Mustang. But once they make it uh, not been able to find a consistent pace for a while now. Uh, or certainly, certainly enough pace to, to bust through into that top um, three of the uh, of these um, GR3 cars. Uh, and it looks like there's plenty going on on the racetrack, but it is. Um, so Scorp Scorpio in pits, that was actually three over three on Kiko. Uh, on, um, I forgot his name. Nicky, Nicky. Right, Fino Engineering leads the way. 8.7 seconds to Kiko. Kiko's been in the pits, of course. And uh, we'll run for a while. Uh, Fino will be pitting, I would say, with some authority around lap 37, 38. Maybe I think 38 would be uh, more, uh, would, would be more beneficial. Um, that will take us into the final half hour of the race. Uh, well, it was right. But yes, I think by the time Fido's going to the pits, we have about half hour left of this race. And then we can have another full run down there and see where everybody's at. Um, and if there's any potential battles uh, going to be starting on the racetrack. Uh, so Kiko um, is going to need to just, they're all going to need to pit again anyway. So um, it, being being slow and slightly different strategies is difficult to tell. Uh, but Kiko does have a free pit stop over Corey, whatever happens now. Um, has this fuel on board, but uh, it's a completely free pit stop. Uh, can go in from that position and stay in that position for the time being. Uh, Scorpio has a target, 6.5 seconds up the road. Uh, been lapping in those low, uh, I think they came from low 32, but I think consistently there in the high 32s uh, would be a, a more accurate representation. Uh, whereas Corey in those uh, low to mid 32s just seems to be a little bit quicker. And Scorpio, and they're both on. And that three CR is Triple Crown. Triple Crown! <coughs> I remembered. I remembered something that I didn't write down uh, and didn't really actually need to remember so much. Um, I'm, I will. Uh, I will. Will I? I might. I might have a spot if I have the time to speak. I'll do a spot. Um, mostly for me as well, just to remember who is what. Uh, Cloud is back in the lead of that G23 class, and it's 3.6 seconds over Malagator, uh, who's desperately trying to find, going to need to find a couple of tenths at least. Uh, 45.1 for Malagator, uh, 45.3 for Cloud. 
So Malaga clearly can can go faster, but that's a one lap pace. It's the race consistent uh, race pace you need to look at. And at the moment, this cloud seems to find that consistency among the look at that 45 3, 45 3, 45 4, 45 4. Uh, very much so in that range. Malagator has a bit more fluctuation, um, has gone quicker of course with the 1, but dipping into the 46s, dipping back down to the 45s, it's not consistent enough to close that gap. Uh, and he's got his own problems, and they're in the shape of the pink Italian there in this Lexus. This Lexus. Uh, he's chasing down eight tenths of a second. And he's pretty darn racing, is uh, Mandilio at the moment. Uh, closing down on the back of Malagator, he's going to have a little bit of slipstream in his mind. Uh, and that will help, that will help loads. You see he get, uh, get a little bit here, and it kind of ramps up the further round the over you go. Down to the bus stop chicane, you're going to scrub off most of that new gain speed uh, to get into the chicane, get it flicked to the left hand side, Using all the curves, every single one of them, but not too much. Was that too much? Uh, exit out, Philo into the pits. Uh, actually, a little bit earlier than I expected, um, but uh, necessary. Uh, there we go. All right, so watch here now. Uh, get a slingshot. You can see it's going to start closing, but it's more beneficial actually for Mansonetto to stay behind Malagator. Let Malagator do the work. Let his engine burn the fuel. Let his tyres scrub off first. While you sit, um, and yeah, look, the dirty air's not great, but you can sit in that dirty air, uh, and you can save your tyres, you can save your fuel uh, around the, 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 the straight, flat-out bits, and then maybe just back off a little bit with your uh, just and uh, hope you get some, uh, some forward movement. Absolutely, yeah, it's brilliant racing, absolutely brilliant racing from everyone. Kiko still are very much dominating here. But uh, Mantino very strong through this infield section right now on the back of Malibu. Uh, making that exit now onto the tri -oval. A good run here, and this overtake could be on like Donkey Kong in uh, about 30 seconds' time when they. Uh, Pop out the other side. Into the bus stop chicane they go. This is where Mandelia wants to stay a little bit closer to the back. You don't want to turn the car too much because you get cold in the city. But uh, you want to get to do this. Look at closing in on the back of that AMG. Just the, the slipstream just allows him to, to, to move, move in that clear air. He's not got that wind resistance being tucked in behind the car. The car ahead cutting a hole through the air for him, which just allows him to get tucked in, allows him to move that a little bit quicker and close, but he's chosen again not to go for the move. Now that could be because he's saving fuel, that could be because he's saving tires, it could be. You just can't find that little last burst of pace to, to, to get that move done. Uh, there's your race leader. His name is Kiko. He is a Frenchman. He's 35 seconds clear of the Philo engineer. Uh, Philo's had a crash, uh, which is why it's 35 seconds. Uh, you can see that lap 36 was a 20 second loss for Philo. Uh, he has just been in the pits quite recently, but um, that's quite a lot of time to use. Uh, particularly with damage. Now this is where you've got to do the something, you've got to work out, I'm saying there, look, look, another mistake for Fino there, and you've got to work out how much time you're losing, uh, and if it's worthwhile pitting to repair the damage, rather than stay out with uh, that damage on board. It's going to put a real spanner in the works of uh, Fino catching uh, Kiko now. 35, 36 seconds clear. Kiko essentially has a, a whole free pit stop over uh, his rivals, which uh, is a great position to be in with 
uh, just under 30 minutes left of this race. Uh, it is looking like there is a software issue for our level 2 broadcast. Um, so, I will be streaming the level 2, uh, but I, I, I need a little bit of drink. So we'll, um, we'll, we'll discuss it, but uh, we're going to have a look here. So in the pits goes Filo Engineering. Uh, he's opted to repair that damage. Um, we'll probably change that to us and, and see if he can drag it out to the end. Uh, but that allows Corey through, that allows Scorpio through. Uh, now, they're going to have to pit some stage between now and the end of the race. If Filo can make this last to the end, because he's doing those repairs now. Uh, here's the question. If he had to make that last to the end, um, is he able to make a move on Scorpio? Well, 13, 14 seconds is just a sign. Uh, five seconds to Corey. Would to 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 so their job at the moment is going to be to try and put a bit of a gap. It's going to be very, very difficult to catch Kiko. He's always got two feet to touch down with Filo stopping the really good. Um, Kiko will need to have one little foray in the pits uh, in the next lap or two. Um, for him, and then that will take him right way through to the end of this race. So good solid points for uh, Kiko there. Yeah, cool. Um, I will get there as quickly as possible. Um, I have to. I have to make slight amendments to the artwork. The artwork's not full. In fact, I might just leave the artwork here and just pretend to be credits. Um, I mean, you can see I'm getting the jump on the as well. But um, yeah. <coughs> right, so I think Blue One's pretty much sewn up. Legion's going to struggle to catch up with them now. Uh, Philo's got some work to do. The question is whether Philo can get back into second place. Um, yeah, they do indeed. You have to race right away on the racing line over the GR1. Which makes sense um, because the GR1 is so much. Um, so, currently leading is. Uh, Mantinho, uh, because Cloud is in the pits. Now, uh, we know Mantinho is going to have to stop again. It's uh, whether or not Cloud can go to the end. Now, it looks like Cloud is not, and he hasn't, he hasn't changed those soft compound tyres. He's opted to save himself a couple of seconds in the pits by not changing them. Um, he's going to have to pit again anyway, because the fuel's not going to last to the end of this race. So for me, why not just change them? If you've got to come in again anyway. Uh, you know, he's, he's, he's only 20 seconds behind Mantinho. He's going to have to pit. Uh, what, why would you chance it with tyres that are going off? Uh, and not just uh, for the sake of a couple of seconds. Um, when you're in the position you're in. You know, he's not. He, 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 the onus is going to be now on Mantinho, on Kingston, um, on Malligator. Those guys to close down. Uh, on the back of him. The Malagator should... Uh, might have to... I, I think fuel-wise might have to go again. Uh, these um, GT3 seem to uh, burn through a lot. So I think there'll be one more stop for fuel potentially. Uh, Kingston's going to come in. Um, if not this level, certainly at 36. Uh, Cloud, we know, has been in. Antonio, uh, he's going to win some pops on the other side so right now. Into the pits. Here we go. E I E I E I. Oh, along with Legion, he is just going to be for his Um, right, Nicky in the Mustang. Uh, round they come uh, to the bus, which came nowhere near uh, Malagate at the moment. It's 20 seconds on the road, uh, but and has already bit of course. So uh, we know that uh, that, that exit up to Kingston is going to disappear very quickly. Round comes Kingston into the pits, they go. And there we go, and it'll be Malagin Victor uh, who closes that gap. So Cloud leads, uh, but will need to pit one more time for some fuel between now and the next 25 minutes. Uh, currently 11 seconds ahead of Mantilla. Now, the question is, does that fuel last for this point? I'm still not sure. I think you probably need uh, a, a little dash at some stage between now and the end of the race. I don't think it's, quite, it's going to last, but we'll see. I haven't really, I should have done the map earlier, but it seemed they burned through it very, very quickly. 
in the first portion of the race. Uh, right, Malagator um, is going to need a little dash of fuel, but that's it. You can put him at their stars larger. Yellow flag, uh, who has crashed it? <coughs> well, there's a penalty there for Philo. Could that be what caused the yellow flag? Who knows? Who knows? Uh, so that's uh, another blow for Philo. Um, it was going so well. It's, uh, chasing down Keeper, or trying to chase down Keeper. Um, certainly looking good for second. Then had to go in and get some uh, repairs done to the car. Now it could be that that was enough to take him to the end. You can see by the few of on board that he said he's thinking he needs a full tank to get there. Uh, unless of course he carried on crash with him. Um, but uh, it depends very much on Scorpio and Scorpio coming in for the world at the same stage. Uh, as will Corey in second. Uh, so we'd like to close that gap a little bit. Now Kiko has taken his free pit stop and is still 16.2 uh, more seconds clear. Uh, Cloud's going to need tyres in about three laps, four laps time. That's when uh, they're going to start asking questions of his driving ability. Um, they're going to start asking whether they can be, and the answer is going to be absolutely fine. Uh, we cannot do that. Um, so that brings Martin the uh, Neo, uh, and that brings Malagator uh, into the fight with Clack. Uh, question mark, obviously, on whether their few loads are enough to take it to the end, but I'm not entirely sure that that is the case. Uh, Nick with a bit more fuel, but a little bit less tyre in the Mustang. Um, the Greek driver will most definitely, most definitely have to stop again between now and the end of the race. Uh, so it won't do much for that 22 second gap uh, to manage uh, But will have Kingston um, and KBM making the move. It looks like we've lost We have lost um, uh, um, the, 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 the guy in the back is gone. Uh, rage quit, I assume. Uh, I will not go into my rant about how I feel about people who rage quit. Uh, you know, why why don't you, why don't you spend an hour? Uh, and, uh, you know, an hour and ten minutes, and the last 20 minutes of the day, I think. You can't be asked, I'm going to be able to do this. So I'm just going to leave it for you. I don't understand. And, that, and pit quit as well. Uh, in fact, I, I, I think pit quit's worse because you're essentially just rubbing it in everyone's face. Like this one, I'm going to sit in the pit and not bother. Um, yeah. Right, so, uh, Philo coming, uh, right, so that's Corey in the pits. Now that puts Scorpio up into second. There he is, he isn't in the box yet. Philo's coming round. So Philo should now take third position into the break his own turn. Um, he goes seventh gear on the anchors down to second get the rotation up into third place he goes he Corey just pulling up into his pit box now new fresh tires going on Scorpio ahead is gonna have to pit uh, soonish soonish which gives uh I think will regain second but will be um 25, 26, 27 seconds behind uh, the flying Frenchman that is Kiko. Cloud in a good position, uh, but we'll need to change his tyres before the end of this race. He's 9.7 ahead of Malagator. Uh, Malagator, my question mark is on the fuel for Malagator, whether it makes it to the end. If he can make that fuel last to the end, then uh, he's going to the end, and Cloud's in trouble. Uh, Matineo has taken some damage. You can see there, lap 35, it didn't go too well for him, and that is causing a whole heap of problems um, with front aero and front, uh, front left suspension damage. That is going to be slowing him up somewhat. Um, that said, he's just done the fastest his finish, fastest lap of the race, 150, uh, 145, and zero. That is, uh, yeah, the damage from that. 
Uh, but he's opted to stay out and not repair the damage. So uh, I think we have to see what the pace will be like over the next um, couple of minutes. Uh, into the last 20 minutes of this 90 minute race here at Daytona. And for the Group 1s, it is Kiko that leads away from uh, Francais. He's 20 seconds clear of Scorpio Ivan, um, who does still need another pit stop before the end of this race, so uh, shouldn't hold on to second. That will be Philo Engineering, who's only 9.9 seconds down the road and has everything he needs to get to the end of this race, including, including the fast slap with a 130.5. So starting to find a little bit of juice is Philo Engineering. Uh, the question is, of course, can he catch Kiko? Uh, Kiko doesn't need to stop again. So it is a straight fight for first. Uh, and if you want to catch him, he's got 20 or 30 seconds to find over the next 20 minutes. So uh, highly unlikely. Uh, unless, unless, of course, Kiko hits a wall, crashes, does whatever he needs to do, uh, then, then Filo might say. And not that I wish it were him, that, that that's what Filo needs, essentially, to win this race. So Scorpio in, as predicted, Filo will move up to second position. Uh, what about Corey? Does Corey catch Scorpio? Pitted a couple of laps earlier, and Scorpio is uh, 32 seconds behind at the moment. So he's just coming into that banking now. Scorpio is not yet in the pit box. He's in a bit late, but not in his pit box. That's him just coming in and up onto the jacks now. Wheels coming on. There is Corey. It's going to be pretty darn close, I can tell you that. Across the line, start lap 46. Goes Corey, and it's the agonising bit. Because you think like you might catch them. Into turn one he goes, you've got to go all the way round the outside. Stop the trigger um, And we have a look at Scorpio. That's where Scorpio, but look how close he is to the back of him. Bearing in mind, Scorpio, he's on fresh tyres, uh, but they are going to be cold. Corey is going to have the benefit of uh, some, some warmer tyres through this infield section. Uh, can he make the move on Scorpio and pull away before Scorpio can get some heat into those tyres and get them up to speed. Um, that's not as good. <laughs> uh, it does smell good. <laughs> the battling smells good. Um, but it looks like Scorpio already finding uh, the pace over Corey. Um, a little bit of slipstream off the GT3 cars. Not really a huge amount. They're not going to block much air for these big, uh, big monster uh, vehicles. Uh, that opening up and actually Scorpio very quickly finding pace again um, in his uh, Porsche 919 and it's not allowing Corey to get anywhere near. Uh, there's little of course to back with a couple back from Kiko out in the lead. Right, uh, Cloud um, question mark on the tyres. I'll tell you what there's still 15 minutes left of this race. He's going to have to pit, and there's nothing he can do about it. Um, he, there's no way he's going to make this car last till the end. Um, I still think Malagate's going to need fuel. I think uh, they're both going to need fuel. Cloud needs tyres. Now, that is where um, putting tyres on earlier might have been the better plan, because um, Malagate's going to be able to save that little bit of time. Uh, seconds back to all the difference at this stage of the race um, because he's not going to have to change out the tyres. The tyres will last him or should last him the last 15 minutes. Um, he could choose to put them on um, and if he does so then of course he's going to be able to, to push that a bit harder and have to worry about saving them. Um, also he's at the it is this Corey and Scorpio still going on. And he's closed up somewhat as Scorpio. He's got a great run heading to the bus stop you came. You've got to be a bunch of on the brakes, remember, when you're in that slipstream. Get the car out a little dab of brake just to make sure you get out without crashing. Needed a better exit than that to close in. Uh, is he picking up anything from Scorpio ahead? I think like he is. He's not picking up enough to make a move and he's dropping again. Uh, almost out of that one second. Uh, right, that's Cloud into the pits. 
uh, from essentially first in this uh, G or the G1. Uh, a group three cars, sorry. Uh, Maligator, we knew he had to come in. Uh, he's come in as well. This is, this is going to be a race to get out both of exactly the same fuel. It's going to be a race to get out on track. Uh, Mantino also in. Uh, is he going to repair his damage and go for uh, trying to break up that 14 seconds? I think it's a sensible idea because uh, Nicky behind, where is Nicky? Nicky has just come through, getting loads of slip there, uh, which is going to help him out loads for, for a quick lap there. Uh, right, so here we go. Out comes Cloud ahead of Malagaza, and the gap is 2.8 seconds. Nicky, 1.8 seconds back, but has to stop again. Not in this fight now. Uh, Mandino is, uh, well, say still in the fence. He has put on an absolute shit ton of fuel for the last 13 minutes of this race. Um, I'm not sure a full tank was entirely necessary, but uh, pretty close. Uh, so Dobre means, I'm trying to remember what I'm saying now, uh, Dobre means Day. Good. Dien Dobre. Doing good. Right. I think I think you're right. Um, uh, evasion. Yeah, it's pretty close. Um, are you laughing at my uh, my awful translation skills? <laughs> Manager has got some work to do though. Uh, we know he's got some pace Malagator, but he's got to, it's two seconds, and when, uh, you know, Cloud is very capable of, of, of some top end times, um, so 45-1 for Malagator, Cloud's done, he hasn't, he hasn't done a fast lap for a while, but it's been around that 45 three mark. Uh, two tenths of lap, probably not going to be enough, um, between now and then, I think 12 minutes left, essentially, another seven laps. Six, seven, yeah, that's seven laps uh, for them to be in the race. He's going to need to be doing um, about three or four tenths um, because he needs time. He's, he's not just catching. You've got to, over, you've got, you've got to overtake as well. You've got to find the way to make the overtake as well. Uh, so, uh, Nicky into the pits. Uh, Mantino. Uh, that's also uh, who else in did. Uh, so KBM. Uh, he's running to the end. Plenty of I'm still, I still, I don't understand why Cloud and Malagator put so much fuel. Uh, they didn't need that much, and I think that that is that is where Malagator could have saved a bit more time. He, he didn't put he didn't put tires on. Sent off a couple of seconds there to close the gap, but I think he really would have been better served putting um, a couple of liters less fuel in, um, and, and and then he would have come out ahead of Cloud. And obviously the benefit to that as well is, is then, then Cloud's going to push. So whatever Cloud, Cloud whatever fuel he's got on, he's going to try and push, which again can affect the tyres, affect the fuel consumption, starts to make things a little bit squeaky bum time. So Kiko, using his, uh, his free pit stop skills to come in, 56 seconds clear uh, of Scorpio. Um, Scorpio is still holding for it by Philo. Um, back down in fourth um, because he had what looks like a massive crash. And they've been in the bits for Spino. So he's still got to. Uh, yeah, he's not going to. I don't think I don't think top two is going to be possible for him now. Uh, 1.9 seconds for Corey. Uh, in terms of pace, he's only got the pace to catch Corey. He's got the fastest lap in the race. Um, but Scorpio, another one second. I don't know, you know. This could be it could be an interesting photo finish between those two. That's Kiko putting on his um, medium tires. We know that Philo's already run those mediums. Um, I haven't checked the medium tires these two have. Uh, if they have to come in and put medium tires on, um, it's Sayonara uh, for second, and at least to bat it out for the final podium as well. Right, that's the battle we want to look at. We've got a couple of we've got a couple of battles ensuing in the group one, but this is the battle for uh, the lead in uh, group three and it's between a Maligator um, and Cloud who's just up there now Maligator trying to pick up a bit of slipstream if you can 
thing is, it's actually cloud is going to get a benefit of a bit more. Uh, it should have a bit faster, uh, which is going to help him uh, a bit more. But they've got the bus stop chicane to get to him. Now, Manigate needs to get that Lexus um, through the bus stop chicane uh, with as much pace as possible and just close that gap up. So when he exits, he's in a really good position to pick up the draft as they come through. And out he comes, but he's not... He's not that close to the back of the Cloud. He's not going to be getting much help from the draft. So a little bit quicker. And you can see as they slingshot round this uh, left-hander, um, and it really does, it, it, the, the banking really helps kind of throw you out um, and, and up the speed as you come out of the corner. He's getting close, he's not going to be close enough. It would be an insane dive from back there into turn one if he made it, but he's a lot, lot closer now. What he needs to do now is navigate the dirty air through this infield section. Stay with him, stay right in uh, the, the the dust of cloud, the cloud dust, right? Uh, follow him through to the bus stop chicane, make the move uh, as they approach the start of lap 46. Uh, through there goes a Fino back up into second. Uh, that's because Scorpio, he caught, he caught them, and he caught them super, 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 super quick. A uh, little touch on the back of Fino there. Uh, that's going to be stewarded to, to all um, hell, I think. That was a, an unnecessary touch. Unnecessary. We'll have a look at that. I want to check that this, this is the battle we're looking at. So Malagate is still trying to make the move. I don't want to miss this overtake. What I might do actually is I might keep an eye uh, on, on the pair of them and whack a replay mark when it, when it looks like something's happening else in the way. Here we go. This is where his opportunity is going to be. Get through the bus stop chicane. Don't let the dirty air on. Sell your car on the power. Don't pick up a penalty. Get into that slipstream as quickly as you can. Uh, didn't get as good an exit as he did on that last lap, which is going to make it a little bit harder. Um, he's going to lose that impetus he had. Lose that extra little bit of um, of oomph the car had to make the most. He's not going to have an opportunity to into turn one. The back just stepping out on him there makes that a little bit more difficult. Uh, so he's gonna have to go again, get nice and close if he can. Um, I'm gonna have a little look at what happened with Philo and uh, here. So this is um, uh, whatever was going on between Philo and uh, and battles it, it looks like these two have had a bit of a ding dong going on it certainly was something for the students to look at um, previously but at the moment nothing doing between those two um, Scorpio and the uh, they've got traffic to the top now which is going to cause a problem or two does this bring Corey back into the mix it's only 1.2 seconds uh, behind um, Scorpio we'll have a look here what they've got uh, he's there he could potentially get involved with that battle as well. The crowd's still ahead of Maligator, uh, but I don't know how he's still ahead of him. Uh, he's doing everything he's power to hold him off. He will go back and uh, Corey trying to get tapped onto that power. It's a potential top three. It's a potential podium that he's chasing down. <laughs> uh, see Fino going very high there. Wants to, wants to entice Scorpio to go the long way around if he wants to pick up the skip stream. Um, opting not to do that and to take what he feels is the fastest guy, then picking up the skip to head round to turn one. He's not closing at any kind of decent rate at the moment. He can't get it closed down. There's five minutes remain, three laps essentially for these guys. Now the battle down in uh, for the for the for, for the lead GT3 cars. Looks like this, Maligator still all over the back of Cloud. Uh, tires, of course, are going to play a factor. Cloud's going to be in a much, much better position for tires very soon. Maligator needs to get a move done quickly and try and hold him off before those tires give out on him. He's got so much more wear. Um, I've got to be a bit of a stubborn. Um, thanks for the vital, I'm not, I'm, 
Um, is that or that look like there might have been an opportunity there with uh, Cloud just going a little bit wider um, into that right-hander. They did leave a gap, but Malaga did not quite close enough to slide up uh, inside him. <laughs> and not in a happy, fun time way. But they're taking your position away there. Uh, right, last lap was a 464 for Malaga to work. Uh, Cloud was a 464 also. Nothing separating these two uh, in terms of pace. Uh, but it is seven tenths of a second between them and until uh, Malagator can close that gap. This is where he needs to do. This is where he seems to have been either been successful or very unsuccessful. Benarex out of there, putting his strength to slipstream and he's got it. That's how you need to get out of the bus stop chicane when you want to pick up the slipstream. You have to pick it up the minute you get out. And you can see here now, watch as they slingshot round this left-hander towards that star finish line. Just how much more speed Malagate is going to have. 163, 164, 66. You can see he's going to go around the outside. Cloud's going to make him go around the outside. He's not going to give up that inside line. It's all about bravery now on the brakes into turn one. Is there going to be the old switcher available? It's not. That is great defending from Cloud. He knows that he had the speed disadvantage coming into turn one. So he just had to defend his inside line and stop Malagator making a move. But Malagator, late on the brakes, into that right-hander, makes the move and they're side by side again through this infield, batting out, which is three minutes to go of this 90-minute race here at Daytona. As the sun comes back out and daytime is back with us. The night showed us nothing, but the daytime showing us a massive battle now between these two. Cloud just winning out again in this infield section with just three minutes remaining of this race. Malagator giving it everything he's got, but it's not long before those tyres are done and there's nothing left for him to race with. Closing now on the back of Cloud. Here he goes, trying again to find a way through, but Cloud just opening up that gap yet again. There's not many opportunities left. This is the penultimate gap for these guys. Um, it's awesome driving, the skills are very good, and so much respect they give each other as well. Which, uh, you know, neither of them are going to give an inch, neither of them are going to give this up, but they give each other um, enough respect. Right, Malagator again gets that good exit out of the bus stop. This time, can he get the move done? We know what Cloud's going to do. Cloud is going to defend that inside line. Can Malagator sell him a dummy? Make him make a move, do something different. Slide up inside, use the grass maybe. Get really, really brave. He's not, he's going to try again round the outside into turn one. Not, no dummy being sold here. I would have, uh, I would have tried to sell him one and maybe try and dive up the inside. Late breaking into turn one. Around uh, on the apex. Malagator slightly better through there. Is he going to get him again as they turn right down at the end here? And there uh, you can see Cloud desperate. Cloud knows where Malagator's quicker. So that's where he defends with dear life. Uh, but he also knows where he's quicker, and that's where he absolutely keeps his racing line perfect. And he managed again to put Malagator uh, just that little bit out of reach. I think that was the last opportunity for, um, for, for Malagator to make that move. Uh, let's have a quick look at the battle for second in Group 1. Uh, that's 9.2 seconds now. He's opened up the gap significantly on Scorpio. Fido does have the fastest lap at 132.2, uh, but Kiko 22 seconds in the lead of this race and absolutely owning this. And we'll come back to Kiko um, at the uh, way crosses the finish line. <laughs> so Madagator has given up that fight. He's now. Uh, 2.1 seconds back. Um, he gave it everything he had. He wants to make sure he makes it to the end on the tyres that he has left. Did not want to, uh, to give that up. But he's, uh, uh, he, I think he's resigned himself to the fact that he's not going to get caught uh, by Mantino. Uh, but he doesn't. He, 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 you know, no point. There's no point ruining what you've got left of the tyres and potentially losing uh, second when you know that first is just out of reach slightly. But great run from both drivers. Uh, Cloud and Malagator. Brilliant. From um, right, full run down. We've lost the guy at the back. Uh, quit. 
Um, Kingston in uh, last place, 11th uh, place for him. 3.2 seconds uh, back, and we can see there that Mantinio finishes in third. The clock just runs out for him. Uh, so Nicky will come home in fourth in the GR3 class. Uh, KBM uh, will be fifth, Kingston will be sixth. Um, Fino doesn't quite make the final lap, so Kiko gets a victory parade lap all to himself. Uh, Filo Engineering has to resign himself to, to, to second and doesn't get the victory lap at Scorpio across the line in third. Corey will come home in uh, fourth. Legion are already finished in there some way back uh, for, for him. Uh, so Cloud gets another lap. Maligator gets another lap. Uh, he's there. And uh, Kiko, who is there. So actually Kiko, uh, he, he will come through actually. He should get past these guys. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a bit of a parade now for these guys. So Kiko coming through. Uh, up ahead of him is uh, our, yeah, that's Cloud up ahead of him. And so he should get past him to, uh, this is be quite a good final finish. If the GR1 and the GR2 uh, winners, or GR3 winners, cross the line at the same time. Kiko, if you listen to me, slow down, slow down. Uh, you've won the race. Um, wouldn't it be awesome if you slowed down and got you and Cloud crossing the line at the same time? Uh, Kiko doesn't get a toss. Kiko says, I don't care. I'm a winner in this race. And uh, well done to Kiko. Quite convincing win by one lap in the end. Uh, Cloud takes the, uh, the the Group 3 title. Managator got very, very close at the end there, uh, but not quite close enough to get the job done. Right, there we have it. Finished. Kiko is your winner. And we are done with uh, Lobby 1 uh, for this week. We're back next week with more action from Lobby 1. Uh, I will be jumping over to Lobby 2 uh, shortly, um, but there is going to be a short break in between. I'm going to keep the feed of what I might do, actually, is lose, uh, I need to save that replay because there's some good racing there. Really good racing. We turn off the tyres and fuel thingy. Um, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to leave this broadcast up and go straight to the new uh, the new thing here. That's what I'm going to do. But I will take, be taking a short term comfort break in between. So, uh, yeah. Stay right there, people. Right, we are in the uh, new fresh lobby. Um, 
which is here. So I'm going to leave you with uh, qualifying. I'm going to have a quick comfort break and I'll be back and we will continue with uh, more action from Simza in Lobby 2. I'm going to ignore the fact that there's Lobby 1 on there because uh, I'm not changing it at this stage. I'll be back in a uh, few minutes. Talk about it yourselves, people.
Hey, 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 lobby two folks. I hope you all found your way here. I do apologise for missing most of qualifying. A uh, bit of an overlap between uh, one and two. Uh, the uh, broadcaster for lobby two had a bit of a technical issue, so pick it up for the slack as you do. Uh, let's have a quick look at how they all lined up. I don't even know who's in it. Uh, Thirty-one nine was the um, qualifying lap for the nine one nine hybrid driver uh, D Roberts, uh, Justin. Um, uh, Woolly and J Dog round out that top four. Uh, Cornejo, um, the Mexican driver, in fifth, and joining him on row three is a Night Shifter. Uh, then for the GT3s, we've got the Mercedes AMG GT3 of uh, Gikela um, ahead of Arcanite uh, in the Corvette. It's classy and a Sabre Venom. Uh, on row five and row six will be Ridders and Fast Portuguese, um, who is clearly not Portuguese because he's got a British flag there. He's probably Portuguese but lives in the United Kingdom. There we go, done and dusted was qualifying. Apologies for not being able to put you through uh, that. Now, let's have a look and see what's going on elsewhere. Um, so I've got, I've got a load of messages about something else. I was, I was meant to be dealing with something else at this stage after the race, but it's done. It's, it, it is what it is. Uh, it's all going to be set by a uh, host, I think, now. Um, so a few more um, Group 1 drivers. Uh, in fact, uh, two more. Exactly. Sorry, I'm just um, having a drink. Uh trying to uh, yeah get my get my bearings let's have a look who, who we got in jet we didn't have before who's new nikki how you doing um good race nikki enjoy it was it was it fun here's the thing we could do is there anybody that raced in lobby one that wants to come and have a little interview with me in a bit while we do lobby two we could do that, couldn't we? Let's have a look. Let's get in there. Uh, where are we? We could, we could, we could hook up through Discord if you wanted to. Let's have a look in driver chat. See if what anyone's going on. Because it could have been worse. Lobbies could have been at the same time, and only one of them would have got broadcast, wouldn't it? So yeah, not too bad. Excuse me. Uh, a little bit too much drink. Uh, all right, well, yeah, if, if anyone wants to, stick something here in chat so I can see it. And uh, Dave loves interviews. Who's Dave? Who's Dave then? <laughs> right, are we ready to go? <coughs> we've got 90 minutes of racing ahead of us, and um, it's a school night, isn't it? And one of my children has left the back door open and it's freezing. Um, don't do not do it, folks. If you haven't had kids yet, don't do it, man. It's just it's not worth the hassle. It's just too much uh, griefing. Uh, Can we have a look at the, uh, the calendar while we wait? So this is Daytona, the one and a half hour that we're at at the moment. 14th of April is the next race. Dave has to... Oh, yeah, okay, lobby to you. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, yeah, Laguna Seca next week uh, for an hour around there. I love a bit of Laguna Seca. Then uh, we're off to uh, Brazil. Uh, two days after my birthday, so if you want to prepare some gifts um, and uh, and a cake, that'd be lovely. Uh, into Lagos um, on the 21st of April. Uh, then we've got Le Mans. Iconic, iconic race track. If you want to, if you like your uh, endurance racing at Le Mans, uh, GT Alphas. Um, it has a, has a new series coming up soon. Uh, four race series at the four iconic racetracks here on uh, Grand Turismo. One of those being Le Mans um, for um, a proper enjoyment race. 250 miles uh, to be exact. Um, the Icons 1000 is 250 miles of uh, four iconic racetracks. Uh, Le Mans, the Nuremberg Ring, uh, Spa and uh, Suzuka. Um, which uh, we'll be visiting here on 30th of June for the one hour. Um, a lot of racing, a lot of racing to go between now and the 14th of July. And 
looking forward to seeing just who uh, just who can who can who can sustain the uh, the, the winning ways we saw uh, from the from the from the race earlier that Philo a um, couple of errors just cost him but um, Kiko was absolutely uh, absolutely devastating in that race and, and, and completely dominated the uh, the group one uh, portion of the proceedings and um, Cloud did a really good job uh, in the group three holding off uh, a charge from Malagator um, over a good couple of laps Malagator really put the pressure on him but uh, managed to hold him off and, and uh, not allow him through. So everyone should be ready, getting their tyres on. Again, same as before, they must use um, the soft and the medium compound tyres at some stage over the next 90 minutes of racing. Um, should be a very similar, excuse me, very similar um, amount of laps. Um, and of course, we know the group ones will be off up the road like whippets. Uh, when this race begins uh, right we are about to begin uh, good luck to all of the drivers um, let's hope we have some action du -du 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 -du. let's spectate um, I, have, I have to do this every time you should be able to set this up before you even go into the bloody lobby and have it where you like it we want to go there with um, yeah so Arcanite is uh, is on pole four the GT3 drivers and that's how we'll have a look at it we will see what happens in two turn one yeah that, no that was absolutely awesome driving um if uh, more of the same things we've got a we've got a glitch um we've got a glitch call in the lobby does that mean we're going to restart um you can see the the I, don't, I didn't see who it was i just saw the word glitch or what looked like glitch come up but it looks like everyone's all right you know, any problems or can we restart oh yeah we've got from J Dog asking for a restart where is J Dog which one's J Dog right so we've got uh, we've got a couple of calls now um, what is going on are we going to get it looks like a few people backed out so yeah, yeah I think we're going to restart so people backing out should we do the same then Are they doing a restart or is it a case of no they're not? At the moment it doesn't look like they are doing a restart and some people have backed out. Now what's the what's the drill here? Because we're already down to just eleven. Um, of the uh, there's only three of the six group one runners left on track. Three have backed out already. Um, right, so there was an issue in turn one, and you can see there Arcanine Classy having a little battle already. But it looks like the race is going to continue without a red flag, uh, despite the fact there was a call for glitch. Um, what have we learned from this exercise, people? Do not back out of a lobby until the red flag is confirmed, because now there is no red flag, and your race is properly over um, that is an absolute devastation for um, and oh he's in ah that's the other problem because Arcanite is in VR um, he can't see these messages uh, so here's the thing if you're the host and you're running in VR you can't see how, how yeah you, you need there needs to be a separate race director that's not in virtual reality that can see everything so we should, I mean, sure, but surely Arcanite can see that he is in fifth place and that there should be six Group 1 cars out on the track and that there is something very, very wrong. Um, but, yeah, we've got that. That's a problem. Um, yeah, I think that's the case. I think everyone needs to back out uh, so he realises. The problem is we're on lap two already. Uh, so I'm going to... I don't know. It's not my job to do it, but I'm going to do it anyway. Let's, let's, let's see what happens if I type in red flag. I think we need some sort of system in place. It, 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 it's good to get this out of the way in the first race and find out where problems are. Um, so basically, if you're in VR and you're the host, you need to be um, 
you need to be uh, have a race director of some sort. Uh, Izzy started to realise now as people are backing out. Um, I'm sticking with him to see if everyone else leaves. Will he notice? Will he notice that everybody's gone? Or will he just keep going around for like an hour and a half while we all sit here waiting for him? Oh, I think he's realised now. There we go. Uh, thanks very much, Dane. I uh, did enjoy it very much. Uh, I'm going to have a sore throat tomorrow. I think we have having to do too. I wasn't expecting to do too. Certainly not. Um, but uh, we, 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 we need must. Um, to be fair, I've done an awful lot of Daytona over the last few weeks. I have the uh, 24 hours of Daytona, of which I did four stints um, just a couple of weeks ago. So there, there was four stints of the 24 hour Daytona, four two hour stints there. So yeah, I've, I've broadcast, all, you'd think I could probably do Daytona backwards. I've spent a lot of time here over the last uh, few weeks. Right, so we're back into the lobby. Um, bring that back up for now while uh, everything gets sorted out. Um, yeah, for the phenomenal, great racing. Well done, everybody. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, clearly that's the case. So there needs to be a race director of some kind if the uh, if the host is uh, on VR. Um, what usually happens? Uh, if we do it for the big for the big in, in the endurance events, like the like the Daytona Twenty Four Hour, every lobby has a race director that's not actually racing. So somebody that's responsible. Um, they they might not necessarily be hosting, but they do act as a race director. Um, it's usually a driver will host, but a race director will essentially keep an eye out for things like red flags and stuff like that and take control of that side of things. And it does make things a little bit easier. Um, ah, there you go, Malagator. Yeah, it makes sense now, Dave. Yeah, that was, uh, yeah, it, it, was a good, it was a good fun race. You nearly had him. You nearly had him. Um, there we go. Uh, yeah, he wasn't in control. Yeah, it, it, there is that glitch that happens sometimes with a rolling start. We saw it, uh, there was an Alphas race um, where I didn't actually see it because on my screen it looked all right. But uh, all it looked like, there was one car looked like he had a, he'd had a, uh, a wheel failure um, of his actual equipment, not um, a wheel failure on the, on the game. And uh, yeah, it was, it was mental. Like, it, it ended up like the leaders were, were four seconds ahead going into turn one. But on my screen, you didn't see that. You just saw the cars pulling away as normal. Um, but yeah, they glitched out big time, and it's a, it was a big cocky cock up, which is why it's good to have a race director to solve that kind of thing. Yeah, see, I didn't really see much qualifying here, so I don't know. It's going to be hard to, uh, to to pick anyone. And from what I saw in the early, the early uh, parts of the races, the Arcanite Classy are going to be having a little bit of a battle in the Corvette and that 911. I didn't really see much of the Group 1, so I, I couldn't tell you. Um, but yeah, looking forward to uh, a good fight. Hopefully we get away well this time. Right, shall we go again? Let's try this again, shall we? One red flag down. Uh, no more red flags to go. We want to go there. Um, and we want to go there. Keyboard's working fine. Right. We need to be looking backwards, don't we? Because that's where the problem was before. Okay, we'll see the group ones as, as we expect. Off they'll go. They'll disappear off into turn one. We'll make sure they get through safely first. Probably, probably should go with the right shift. Um, get closer to the action. Uh, everyone through. No one's died. Uh, and behind here into turn one they go. Looking good. Looking good. Um, who's at the back? Uh, Smithy. Smithy Jr. in the Lexus. Uh, yellow flag for whom? Who has died? We'll put a marker in. And then uh, there, well, there we go. So that is Woolly. Let's have a look, see what happened to Woolly, shall we? Because Woolly was up in the group one. So into uh, essentially turn three. Just, just got it all kinds of wrong under braking. Um, and then, uh, of course, that's when it goes wrong. So now it's going to be quite a difficult um, task. <laughs> <laughs> to reverse back onto the track. It's going to be quite a difficult task for Woolly now because he is at the back of the pack. He's a group one driver at the back. He's four seconds behind Smithy, which won't take him long to catch up. But he, he's got to make his way through a field of 
um, Group 3 cars that he, he isn't really racing against, but he isn't lapping either. So, a lot of work for Willie to do now to, to try and catch up. And of course, he's already lost um, any slipstream he would have had from those front runners. So, this is how it's looking after that start. It is uh, uh, D. Roberts is currently leading, but with that half second penalty, that won't be for very long. Uh, J Dog running in second is really, really close to the back there. Uh, still good battle actually really between those top four. Night Shifter and Justin Gant um, swapping places as I move down through it through turn one. They go very wide for Night Shifter, just falling off the pace a little bit. Uh, Cornelio uh, from Mexico, uh, he is kind of all on his own now after we saw Willie disappearing off the racetrack. Um, at this very corner, one lap ago, um, but still very close, still all to the race for up ahead. Um, I said that Classy and Arkanite were going to have a bit of a battle, didn't I? And uh, look at that, Classy is already ahead of Arkanite um, in the Group 3. We'll have a little look in a sec. As you reckon, GR3 uh, Dridders, I think it's Dridders. Um, you think Willie, well, you said Willie, but yeah, I think, I think Willie is. He, I think he's back into signal, he's back ahead of the GR3s, but he's uh, he's 14 seconds off the pace at the moment. Um, he, he's going to need to drive like he's never driven before after that spin in turn three. Um, yeah, it's, it, it, it's a lot of work to do. Um, and it, you know, it's, it's a relatively short racetrack as well, it's only three and a half miles um, and 12 turns, not all of them. Are proper terms anyway. So it's, 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 I don't really count it as a corner if you don't have to break. There's another yellow flag. I'm going to put a mark in case you find out who it is. Uh, but Woolley at the minute just seems to be absolutely struggling with this car. So, J Dog, uh, he's got some damage. What happened to him? Let's have a little look. See. Uh, so, coming through the bus stop. Oh, it looked to me very much like he clipped the car ahead and it just unsettled him a little bit. Um, not a great start, so um, there is hope for Woolley yet to be able to tack on to the back of uh, the Group 1s with J-Dog um, causing himself some problems there, but he's 8.8 .8 seconds off at top 4. Um, but that is the battle there. Now you can see that uh, Roberts from DSR, just uh, he's already 2.3, 2.4 seconds clear. Um, Tire-wise, what's ever using? Uh, soft oh, some damage at the back of uh, Roberts there as well. Uh, 34 2 is fastest lap so far. Uh, Night Shift to second. He's got uh, Justin Gant right there for company. Side by side they go. Almost perfectly side by side uh, for him and Cornelio. Uh, Cornelio just tucking in behind. Doesn't want to. Uh, the last thing you want to do is be going through uh, the bus stop chicane side by side. We will get we will very clear in a minute. And we're not for a minute. It's uh, very close with these group ones at the moment. Uh, and through goes uh, Cornelio and Justin Gant. I have to say, uh, a bit early to make the move because it's allowed Justin to get straight back at him. He's got the slipstream heading down to turn one. And that car ahead of Nightstick all over the road at the moment. Uh, Justin not able to make the move, but he's got the inside line. Cornelio not defending it. Um, but under braking far too late on those brakes, but just, just stays ahead. It's uh, it's going to be feisty, I think, between these two. Um, little move to try and uh, tuck underneath him, but it doesn't work out too well. There. Right, J-Dog, we know he's in fifth. He had a little uh, foray with the wall. Foray with the wall. And Woolly, uh, he went speedy, spinny, spinny. But uh, let's go on with him. Right, let's have a look at... Uh, the GR3 cars, good three cars. Uh, so Classy is in the Porsche 911 that I said was crap at Daytona and has so far demonstrated that it's anything but crap at Daytona. Uh, doing a really, really good job. Arcanite in that Corvette, gone for the American Muscle. Um, just behind him, a uh, half second difference between those two. Another. Uh, Another Nor Nor Norway, Norwegian, and um, uh, a bro bro the brother from across the pond, one of our colonial friends from the United States of America. Fuck yeah! 
Uh, 6.7 seconds to a uh, Sauber Venom. Um, another DSR driver, that's Dorpus, uh, Dorpus Racing. Um, he's in the McLaren 650 uh, S. S is uh, short for, uh, stands for uh, Super Cool. Uh, it's a really good car, I love the McLaren. Um, one of my favourite uh, cars. He's having a little bit of pressure from Smithy Jr. who's got that slipstream on him and um, for some reason tucked out of it a little bit too early for my liking. Stay in there Smithy. Let him pull you up to the bus stop chicane. Then you drop out into the clean air. Uh, on the brakes, on the brakes, on the brakes. He was having a little look. I think I think Smithy was thinking about it then. Um, but uh, thought better of it. That's surely got to be a penalty for both of them. Uh, they were miles off. Uh, got away with it though by the looks of it. No, he got one. Uh, did Sauber Vision get one? No, he didn't. So it was just Smithy picking up that penalty. So that battle is done. But that brings our riddles into it. And um, this is the uh, the Malligator tip for uh, the GR3. Uh, currently running in uh, Texas fourth in this um, GT3 uh, lineup. Uh, makes the move on Smithy quite easy. Go, Dave, go! Um, right, we've got, uh, so we know Smithy's back there. Uh, Gear Kikela. Gear Kikela. Kikela. Um, racing the rivals of Drava. Uh, in the um, AMG GT3, 5.2 seconds back. Actually, what I like to call No Man's Land. Um, already, uh, a little bit of space. Can just settle into the race, not have to uh, worry about defending, not worry about attacking, just race your own race. But, of course, no slipstream for you. Uh, and Fast Portuguese is, um, well, actually going completely against his name. His name suggests that he's quicker than he is because he's lost at the moment. And he's got a British flag, so clearly he's for shit. And I'm only joking. You're quicker than me, and you probably are Portuguese anyway. Uh, right, there we go. So, uh, that's your 13 runners. <coughs> Excuse me. So, too much talking and it's killing the throat. There's your race leader, uh, Roberts. Uh, 5.5 seconds clear. Um, absolutely dominant at the moment. Uh, it's got a little bit of rear end damage, but nothing too shabby to worry about. Clean doesn't seem to be affecting him too much, though. Woolly, with the fastest lap of the race thus far, Woolly was the uh, with the Malligator tip for uh, the uh, Group 1 win. But, of course, he spinned. And if you spin, you don't win. <laughs> he's, got, he's got a lot of work to do. If he, to go. But he has already uh, gained a position over J Dole. Uh, Night Shifter, 1.1 seconds clear of Justin Gant. Um, just enough to keep him at bay. Uh, Cornillo from Mexico, uh, 2.8 seconds back. Woolly is 9 seconds. He's got a bit, a bit of work for Woolly to do now to try and close up that gap to uh, the Mexico. Uh, 31 seconds to Jadon. I think Jadon's been into uh, the pits. Indeed, he has. He's been in and uh, put on the medium compound tires. Right. He's 31 seconds back. Um, but it's classy. Uh, got his way around Arcanite nice and early on uh, in the proceedings and starting just to open up a bit of a gap. Good classy. Uh, 45 0 for him, which is, um, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, that's quicker than the quickest time in Lobby 1 in the GT3, I think. I, just, I might stand corrected, but um, <coughs> yeah. So, classy. Um, over Arcanite or Arcanite Prime um, 3.2 seconds as it stands 0 for Arcanite he's over and soft um, Ridders he's on the medium compound tyres he's sliding his way through the field at the moment um, putting in some really solid times and uh, 9.2 seconds uh, well it's a lot more than that classic into uh, the pits um, Arcanite staying out. Plus he's gone in a bit earlier. Uh, maybe he's going for an undercut. What is that? Uh, what is that guy doing? Dancing. You feel like dancing. Um, who else is coming in? 
Kaikela, no, staying out. So just classy uh, in early. Um, who was that that left the room? Was that? Uh, ah, we've lost someone. Uh, we have lost. We've lost the Mexican. Where is the Mexican? Uh, we've lost the Mexican dude. Um, he's gone. Uh, he's an ex-Mex. Ex-Mex. <laughs> uh, from Group 1. So uh, we're down to just five Group 1 runners. Uh, that gives Willie a little bit of... Um, yeah, as he's back. Uh, Cornillo. Uh, but he had gone. Um, listen, it happens. It happens to the best of us. It happens to be even people like me. Uh, with, uh, you know, if you matter how stable connection is, how much you pay for it, how good it is. Sometimes things just don't work and you get kicked out and it is what it is it's, you know it's, it's it's the sim races equivalent of having an engine problem or a gearbox problem or a, uh, you know any sort of car mechanical problem during the race the only slight difference is of course um you know in motor racing you can take it to your pits and maybe fix it and get back out you can't do that uh, here once you're out you're out and that's uh, unfortunate uh, very unfortunate but it, you know it is what it is uh, so, uh, that puts Woody in a better position, it already promotes him up to 4th, uh, 5.5 seconds behind Justin Gant, got a bit of work to do, uh, yeah, I saw that he was, yeah, yeah, he was, it was one of those things, um, it, it happens to the best of us at the, at the worst of times often, um, so, uh, Arkana in, Ridders in, Sabre in, Smithy in, Gokela has, uh, stayed out, uh, no, got in. I thought, I thought they were staying out with no fuel. I thought that was insane. Uh, we've lost someone else. We've lost... Uh, we've got, well, that's a second uh, person we've lost now. Who, who is this now gone? Um, oh, we're down to just four. Uh, it was... Um, I forgot his name. That other dude. I could actually just scroll back. Uh, another than the other American minute. So, we've lost two group ones. One was a disconnection, the other one I suspect was a range crew. Uh, possibly. Um, I'm not going to call it without name for a fact, but I think. You know, I, I've, I've done enough broadcast to tell the difference, I think. Quite convincingly. Um, often I get told, oh, you do what I do. But listen, I've, I've, it's not my first rodeo, my friend. I've done this before and I can tell. Uh, you, you just know, you see how someone's driving, you see them not having a great day, and then suddenly they get disconnected. You know what's going on. Um, it, it would it would be very weird that the people get to get uh, J Dog. That's the one. Um, the same people seem to get disconnected to most of the ones further back. You don't often see that many spurious disconnections when you leave them. It happens, but not as often if you see them from the back of the group. Right. So Woolly now. Um, well, he's, he's better off than he was because he's up to the fourth. But he is now the. Uh, last um, in this uh, Group 1 class. Uh, Robert's in night shift in. That promotes Woody up. He's going to have to pit. Um, probably not 12, not 12, not 12, not 12, like that. Uh, Justin Gant leads uh, 2.7 seconds at the moment. Uh, classy leading uh, Group 3s by 6.6 seconds. Like shit off a well-oiled shovel. He's driving very, very, very quick. Um, and again, proving my point, proving wrong about the Porsche 911 right here. Uh, now, he's on the softs. I'll come out behind him on those mediums. He does still need to run the mediums. So there's going to be a point in the race where he's not going to be as quick. So he, he really does need to use this advantage, this tire advantage he's got at the moment, just to open up that gap as much as he can from the rest of the field. Uh, he seems to be doing that in quite a decent way at the moment. Uh, Ridders is uh, 7.8 seconds behind Arkwright. He's on the soft, he's not long out of the pits on those tyres. So he's going to have to push a little bit to try and close in. Uh, but pretty comfortable run, he's not under any pressure from Sabre Venom at the moment. Um, but you know, you, 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 you want to be moving forward, you don't want to be going backwards. You want to be challenging the guy ahead, not thinking about the guy behind. As much as you possibly can. Uh, so William just get into the pits. I need to just spank my keyboard across the room. Um, uh, I'm going to leave you with. I'm going to leave you with. Is there any battle going on? I'm 
going to leave you with one more here. Uh, I'll, I'll, that one there. I'll be back in two minutes. Apologies, I have returned. Sorry about that. I'm going to do something very quickly. Um, I think I had to then. Uh, I, I, I did something that's planned, so I kind of have to change the Right, um, did we have some good onboard footage from uh, Gear Carla? Uh, apparently, very smooth driving, so that's good. Uh, loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of it. Gear Carla, 5.1 seconds behind the same venom as it stands. Uh, on those modern tires as well, which uh, 
get them out of the way, that's what I say, get them out of the way. Uh, out in front, any change? Um, yeah. <laughs> Another 10 seconds of change. Um, um, I think Mr. Roberts is in the wrong lobby. Uh, he needs to go slower. Uh, no, he's incredibly quick. He's 15 seconds clear. Uh, almost bought himself a free pit stop. Um, not far off it. Another, another 10 seconds on top of that and he has a free pit stop. Um, he'll be needing one soon. Those tyres looking a little bit rippy. Um, but uh, comfortable. Woolley has worked his way back up to second. A um, couple of bits of help from uh, disconnection and what looked like a potential rage quit. Um, Bart has worked his way around Night Shifter and Justin Gant as well. So, um, still on. It's still on, Malinador. It's still on potentially for the win. Can Woolley close that 15 and a half second gap? Um, Mr. Roberts has done a 31.8. Uh, 31 8 also from uh, Woolley. So Woolley's got the pace, but he's going to have to find some tenths. And he's going to have to start finding them now because it's quite a big gap he's got. Uh, but you know, the tyres are much better. So um, he will actually be in the lead when Roberts goes into the pits. But we'll find out later on just how it's slotting in. Uh, Justin Gadd is 5.2 seconds back, 21 ahead of Night Shifter, who's got some damage. Uh, uh, on, and on the medium tyres. So uh, that will slow him down a bit. Uh, Classy is uh, facing in the wrong direction. Can't part of there, mate. Uh, let's have a look what happened to Classy. Classy comes up uh, as the daylight goes. Uh, gets it wrong on the brakes here, does he? Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, that's the wrong direction, mate. The track goes that way. It's uh, yeah, anti -clock. Uh, and yes, back onto the racetrack. So that gap now will have closed significantly. Uh, 1.7 seconds after I can see him again um, and start to um, have a little go and going to get him. Uh, that 1.8 second gap is on the mediums, remember. So it's going to be a little bit harder to get the traction down out of the corners. And he's, he's about a second, about a second quicker, a lap of one classic on those softs. Uh, but of course, he will still need to run mediums at some stage. Uh, 8.1 ahead of Ridders. Uh, he's a Ridders himself of his first set of tyres and uh, put his new Classy into uh, the pits. Uh, we knew that was coming. Um, so, of course, Arkanite goes through. Ridders will come through as well. Yeah. Um, as maybe, so we're Sabre Venom. How far back is Sabre Venom? Um, he may well come through as well. Uh, he's classy still. He's not even in the pit box yet. Where's Gear Carla? Gear Kayla? Yeah, good for the race. Yeah, definitely. Um, blue flags coming. Uh, right, so Gear Kayla is through as well. Um, thank you, Gear. I'm coming. So thank you, okay. Thank you, but uh, it's a team tourist. Uh, I'm not racing with you, so I'm not shit. Um, Smithy Jr. Uh, running there in ninth. He's going to be pitting uh, somewhere around like 16 or something, uh, along with your car, a similar strategy there. That's where class has popped out. Um, just behind him, potentially, uh, he's going to get the move done before uh, even the pit. Looks like he's certainly got some pace, this boy, um, in the uh, Porsche. Uh, having a little look up the inside, going to make the move now. Okay, going to drag race down. You can see the back end of that. Uh, that's the Lexus, and it just uh, wants to step out. It wants to kill you, this Lexus. It doesn't like you staying alive out of the corners. It wants to make sure that you're either pooping yourself or dead. Uh, getting a good run down to the bus stop. Does he make the move before or after? He's going to make the move before. Take it up the inside line. On the brakes in that 911, get slowed down. It does compromise your entry a little bit, which definitely compromises your exit. Um, oh, well, very nearly, very nearly saw that ball's facing the wrong way yet again. So, uh, up, back up to ninth. Um, he's got some work to do. Sabre Venom in, Ridders in, Arcanite all into the pits. Uh, Gikela also in. So, we should see Classy regain the lead of the GT class uh, it's how much of a gap is left once uh, they will come out that's the question now Arcanite is just putting the fuel in now and round comes classy 
Um, he wants to keep it on the road. He wants to make sure this is nice and steady, nice and smooth, smoother than a cashmere cod piece um, at this stage. Uh, so, okay, right, back on the soft compound tyres, the gap is 6.9 seconds, 69, baby. Um, but Ridders right there. Um, he's got rid of the, uh, he hasn't got rid of the tyres. He's kept the tyres um, and staying on the previous set of the fuel that screwed him up there. Uh, so yeah, Cla Class he's uh, pulled out a bit of a blind there, 6.8 uh, seconds over Arcanite with Ridders putting some pressure on. This, now this could be uh, good for Class. He has Arcanite, uh, has to spend some time trying to keep Ridders behind him or defending too much. Uh, it's going to allow Classy just to uh, pull away a little bit. Um, what might be worth doing is these two, rather than racing each other at this stage, is if they help each other out a little bit, a little bit of bumpy bumpy from Ridders can help Arcanite up the road. He gives him the slipstream back. It pulls them that little bit closer to Classy, closes the gap, and they can duke it out later on um, for uh, who wins the race. Now, we are only one, uh, 30 minutes into this 90 minutes. Uh, lobby to a uh, race here at Daytona. Um, if you are just joining us, where the hell have you been for the last two hours, you um, people? <laughs> uh, this is the Sims Endurance Challenge. Uh, lobby one saw some great action, um, and we're now in lobby two, despite what it says on the screen. Uh, there was a technical issue for the uh, other broadcaster, so I had to run it as a continuous over the, uh, over the two races. Um, we will have it solved for the But, so Ridders is behind Arcanite. He's not been able to close in though. So uh, it looks like Arcanite just able to stop edging away again from uh, the, the challenge of Ridders. And they are going to have to move out of the way very soon as one of the group of uh, one cars are coming through. Uh, Sabre Venom comes back out in 8th. He's 6.6. Uh, with a 13 second advantage over Kia Kayla, who we had that nice little board with. 4.4 uh, to Smithy in India uh, from uh, Racing Horizons. Uh, um, and then 3.4 seconds back to Fast Portuguese. We've lost two of the group one drives already. One to a, a forced disconnection and one to a, uh, uh, a manually forced disconnection. Uh, right, so Roberts into the uh, pits from the what, 15. Uh, odd seconds clear. Uh, Woolly now um, off into the lead. Now considering that... Uh, right, so Woolly had that spin on lap one. Uh, which put him plum plum last. He had to work his way back through the group three cars and has worked his way back to uh, the front. He is going to need to pit. He will lose that lead again to uh, Roberts when um, he does pit. But it's, uh, it's certainly looking a lot rosier now here on lap 19 than it was 18 laps ago. Uh, Night Shifter in to the pits from fourth. Uh, Justin Gant, he's going to need to pit uh, somewhere around lap 20, lap 21, uh, which should uh, uh, never see what to back to the lead. Now, the question, of course, is going to be how far ahead he's going to be. He is um, over a minute already ahead of Night Shifter, um, who is at the rear of that group front race and across the two of the group one drivers. Uh, Willie will choose to come on. Well, he, he can stay out for another few laps yet. He's just done the fastest lap of the race, actually. 131.0, so he's clearly showing that he's got the pace to win this. Um, it's 14 seconds to Justin Gant at the moment. He was 15 and a half seconds behind uh, Roberts um, at the point that Roberts went in there or thereabouts. So it'll be interesting to see when he does come back out, what that gap has come down to, if it's come down at all. That's the thing, that, that, that hasn't come down. 21 seconds, it's about 27, 28 second uh, loss in the pits, give or take a couple of seconds. <laughs> um, so we'll find out if, um, if if it is indeed a six second difference between them. Um, I suspect it's probably a little bit more than six seconds. But I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that 15 seconds has come down uh, a 
little bit. You can see they're just uh, fighting their way through the pack. And that actually had a woolly, isn't it? Um, that's uh, fast Portuguese, I think. There? Yeah, that's fast Portuguese. But they've just come past and 3.4 behind Smith. Uh, they're on different laps, these two. That's Night Shifter, who's a lap behind. He's been lapped already by the leaders in this Group 1 uh, challenge. Uh, again, it makes it much more interesting because they're not now just trying to make, uh, navigate the Group 3 cars. They've got Group 1 cars to navigate. Um, clipping the wall there as he, uh, as he pulls it up from behind that Group 1 car. So into the pits comes Woolley from the leader race. 19 seconds clear of his uh, rival four first. You can see him just coming into that bank's left hand and now Woolley yet not in that pit box. So let's see what the gap is going to be after this pit. Um, this pit window is over for the front runners. Um, just again 27 seconds back. So he's still going to be in second. Here he goes into turn one breaking zone. Again, it's turned around. Woolly is still on the jack. Wheel's going on now. He's still got to put some fuel in. Down he goes. Remember, though, he has used the mediums. Robert's not. Uh, he's using them now. So he's going to lose some time. So this is actually a very, very key part of the race for Woolly. This is where he needs to use those better tyres to uh, open, uh, to try and close that gap. The gap is 13.4 seconds. Um, Robert is already going to be having the heat into his tyres. So they'll already be working um, for him. Although well, obviously not so much soft, um, but the light is, is, is feeding from the sky, and it's floodlights and headlamps all the way now. So what can Woolly do over this next uh, stint of about um, eight or nine laps? This is, this is key, really. Can he can he find uh, a second or, or, or so a lap? Um, if he can find 1.2 seconds a lap over his next over his next stint, he could be in a very very strong position to be challenging for the lead. And, and considering what happened on that one, that is absolutely unthinkable. Um, so he will be very pleased with that. And uh, and none of will be incredibly pleased with his prediction. Although his, uh, his prediction is not working out quite so well in Group Three. Uh, talking of Group Three, Classy back in the pits. Uh, he's coming quite early. Um, strange choice to come in. He had plenty of fuel left. Uh, maybe the tyres just didn't have enough left on them, which is why he's chosen to take them. But that, so he comes back out in 10th uh, behind Smithy Jr. Uh, Smithy Jr. is going to be out for a while, so he's going to have to take him on the racetrack. Um, 3.6 up the road is a uh, good Well, I say up the road, uh, up the grass. Let's have a look and see what happens now. Uh, Siki Kalers is uh, trying to make a challenge. What happens? Oh yes, uh, just the back end just uh, just snaps out and onto the grass. You go, Cop. Um, so fast Portuguese now really really puts the pressure on. Uh, and uh, didn't I don't think he saw the Group One car coming through there. Um, although they are supposed to. Uh, maintain their racing line and the group ones are the ones that go round them so actually um, the group one should have probably uh, made a bit more of an effort or just waited one corner would have probably been a better idea uh, oh, it says fast I thought it was fast <laughs> that makes sense it's next fast which is. Um, so 1.5 seconds but not closing uh, quick enough on Kayla and Kayla 1.9 behind Classy at the moment uh, that's Sabre Venom uh, running in 7th position, uh, 3.3 ahead of Smith Jr, 21 seconds behind Manilator's pick of Ridders. Tyre starting to look like he's getting rid of anyway, um, as does he, <laughs> Ridders himself, uh, with the uh, with the group of cars coming up behind him. Uh, so Arcanite currently leads uh, the group 3, 6.4 seconds clear. Uh, he's got nice fresh tyres, but not a lot of fuel. So he is going to have to come in relatively shortly, uh, probably about lap 24, maybe lap 25 if he's a bit studious with it, I think 24 is, is probably more realistic. Uh, the, dis dif the difference between him and uh, his biggest rival, which is classy, uh, so we'll be 2, 5 and a half, uh, 25 and a half. I think he's got a pit stop on him at the moment. It looks like Arcanine might just have 
a free, if not free, it's certainly a very cheap pit stop over Classy at the moment uh, with the distance ahead that he is. Uh, what is it, four minutes? Uh, yes, 20, 30, it's about 30 seconds. So I can look looking sitting pretty at the moment. Um, if you can eke out a few fastest laps, uh, certainly fastest for group three, that would be um, awesome. uh, Woolley's still fastest man on the racetrack. He is back in second now and now done his pit stop. Uh, but the gap down to just 6.1 to 2.3 seconds. Um, it was 15 and a half. Um, then last time we checked it was about 13. It's now halved. So uh, he's on the medium tyres, of course. We know that so it's on mediums. Um, he didn't have a great lap then, 39, uh, 39.7 in the previous lap. Um, so he clearly made a mistake, which has helped Woody close that gap. But he's back into those high 32s, mid to high 32s on the mediums. Woolley is, um, he has been uh, as, as quick as 31.0, but um, has not been able to recreate that since his pit stop. 32.3 or 33.3. Um, he needs, needs more pace. The, 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 the sad fact of it is that if Woolley wants to win this race, he's going to need to be dropping back into those 31 zeros. Um, that might not be easy without um, without some slipstream, but um, he certainly needs to be uh, sub 33 every single lap now, particularly those Roberts is on the mediums and churning out those kind of times. Uh, Justin Gant, 15 seconds back. There's no real battle between him and Night Shifter. Uh, those two, it's a bit of a time trial for, for Justin and for Night Shifter, both of the RRT uh, team. I don't know what the RRT stands for. I'm assuming it's not racing, it could be racing the RRT team, couldn't it? I don't think it is, though. Uh, but yes, yeah, so they're um, <coughs> slightly different livery shows, even though they are um, revolution racing. Yes, you know what it's called. Right, so Arkanites into the pits from fifth. We'll see now how big that gap really is. So it's 26 seconds to Smithy. Uh, Smithy only just hit in the banking now. Uh, who's that up ahead of Smithy? That's one of the drummers, is it not? Yeah, that's uh, just the game. So he's into the pits as well. Classy comes round now. Just crossing the start finish line into the braking zone goes Classy onto those brakes and gets turned in. Now, where is Arcanite? His fuel is going in. It's going to be pretty close to be fair. He's he's got some damage though. That that damage needs repairing. That's not going to help because uh, Classy and Ridders are through. Ridders just coming through now. That is Arcanite coming out. Um, he is three and a half behind Ridders um, and another four seconds behind Classy. So, so there is some work for Arcanite to do, significant work for Arcanite to do. Um, Ridders, we know, pit a couple of laps before. So actually, the, his, his battle is, is not just with Classy, it's a three way battle at the moment. We'd like to see that close up if, 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 if you can, lads. You can close that battle up and give the, the good people something to watch. That would be uh, fabulous. Um, if you are watching and you have yet to like the video, please click like button, click the share button. Um, if you don't uh, want to share it, go and knock on your neighbour's door and give them the actual uh, the web address. Um, so let's come and have a look and see uh, some some grown-up children racing. This is what we are, we're grown-up children. We're playing with toys. Very expensive toys, but uh, toys are the same. Um, so, Ridders is still in, still in it. Um, it looks like Mananitor uh, wasn't, uh, wasn't too far off with, uh, with the pits. He's, uh, he's got a good eye for the, 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 the fast guys. Um, they're both running his second in two pits. And Woolly there, 3.7 seconds. Absolute pressure all over Roberts now. He's dropped into those 31s. He's got those tyres fired up. And he's in those mid-31s. He's taking chunks out of Roberts in the lead. Uh, there are four GT1 cars. They're worth six. Uh, one uh, disconnected, um, well, two disconnected. One of them was uh, an unfortunate disconnection. The other one appeared to be a, I'm not winning, it's not fair disconnection. Um, we'll see. 
Um, but yeah, there were six originally. There are now just four. But the only two that are really battling at the moment is uh, you've got DSR Roberts in the lead at the moment for Dauntless Racing. Uh, and he's three seconds clear of Woolly, um, who has taken in the last Winky Pitty Pits on lap 20, came out lap 21. So in the last five laps, six laps, including this one, um, he has taken uh, 10 seconds out of DSR Roberts, um, two seconds a lap. Um, he was helped by um, a, a not so great uh, lap 22 uh, from uh, from Mr. Roberts himself, but he's he's on the medium tyres. Um, we in the mid third, mid to high 32s. Woolley is firmly in those mid 131s, um, and and chunks are, are coming out for that time. It's down to 2.7. Seconds. Um, when's the next pit stop? I hear you cry. Well, very soon. Uh, it, we may not actually get to see the overtake because I think Woolley is going to be uh, coming through while uh, Roberts is in the pits. So the key is going to be how how hard can he push it? How far can, can he pull a gap? That's what he's going to need to do. He's going to want to pull a gap. Um, they both use the medium tyres now. So neither of them are going to have that advantage over the other. It's going to be a straight fight, a soft versus soft. Who's got the right strategy? Who has fuel right? Who's done the math? They're both working on slightly different strategies, you can see, um, because Robert's got uh, two laps left uh, before he has to come in. Um, where are we, lap 27? Yeah, he'll be in end of lap 29 to change out those, uh, uh, to put new fuel in. And I imagine he'll ditch those and go on to the soft. So I uh, Woolley has got many, many more laps than that. Um, probably lap 32, uh, maybe 33, before he has to come in. Uh, and, and he might be in a position, he might be in a position to run to the end from that point. Um, not sure if Roberts will. I think he's just outside the window of it being feasible to run to the end on the tyres and fuel they'll have on board. So that would be interesting. Um, not much of a battle between Justin Gant or Night Shifter, their teammates, so um, come on, get closer and have a giggle dog for us, come on. Uh, Classy currently leading the GT3 uh, race, 3.6 seconds over Ridders uh, and a 3.9 back to Arcanite. These guys just need to shift it up a little bit, get a bit closer, um, maybe, just maybe. The, thinking the problem is they're all a very similar pace, um, so the gaps have been made. They're, they're, no, no one is, is more significantly fast than the other. In fact, they're very, very similar times every lap. They're in those um, uh, it, ranging from the mid to low 45s of every lap for the thrill. Um, over and over. They're, 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 their fastest laps are all very similar. 453, 452, three classes, 453, 453, something like that. So they're all very similar in terms of lap time. So it's going to be very difficult to close that gap unless you can find. You need to find a significant pace somewhere. Um, in terms of the pit window, um, I, th I think the issue here is the class he's putting in similar times to those around, and he's on mediums. Uh, Ridders on the softs and uh, Arkham on those softs. So there is the race leader into the pits. Woolly is already through and round. I think my dog's just fighting. Absolutely stinks. Uh, disgusting. Even that one of my children is having a massive shit. Uh, and he's coming all the way through the toilet. Uh, who knows? Uh, you think you'll catch him? Well, I'm not entirely convinced. You're a little bit more convinced than me. Uh, I think, the, pace, I think the, the problem is Class's pace on the mediums is the same as their pace on the softs. So when he goes back on the softs, you imagine that he'll be a little bit quicker. Um, but it, it all hinges on the pitch strategy, you see, because he's going to come in now. He's going to have to come in again before the end of the race. Um, the longer that Ridders and Arcanite can stay out, uh, the closer it is to one more stop for them. And then it could be Sayonara for Classy. So Woolly is currently 33 and a half seconds clear. Now that is pretty much there or thereabouts a pit stop. Um, Robert's now back on the soft compound tyres. I think Woolly's going to need to make sure that he's do he does no fuel. I think no fuel saving for him. Just burn this fuel out, open up that gap a little bit. That's going to be his key if he wants to win this race. Because Robert's has been pretty reliable. Um, and pretty darn racy, to be fair. Um, but of course, if Woolly wins this race, 
it's phenomenal for two reasons. One, because obviously he won the race. But you've got to consider that he was facing in the wrong direction uh, on lap one, turn three. Lap one, turn three, facing in the wrong direction and behind even the GR3 cars. So he had to fight his way through those and then back up. He got gifted a couple of places by the uh, disconnections, uh, but he, he still had to catch everybody else. And uh, so it will be some feat if he does manage to win this race. So 44 minutes, that's that's the target on the board for the, uh, the Mananator predictions. Uh, Woolly to win Group One, which uh, which I'm a lot more optimistic about than than his claim that Ridders is going to win Group Three. Uh, but we'll have a look. Classy is back on track. Uh, he's on the soft. He's got a nice full tank of fuel. He will need another stop before the end. You think both are wrong? Okay. We'll we'll have a little look. You see, um, I, I I can't see past Classy for the Group Three at the moment, uh, but he does have another stop. So it's, it, it's key to where, where the other guys do the best on. Um, I think Woolley um, is going to need to be in Oh, that one second penalties do not a fast lap make. Um, so, no, no, no. Um, lots, many, many lots. It's quite high. I can't remember offhand. Um, Someone can look it up and tell you. Uh, but I, I can't remember offhand. But it is... It, it, the fuel where the fuel is incredibly hot. You can see because they're uh, how, how awful. Well, there's Woolly in. The gap's 32 seconds. Uh, Roberts is just he's just coming into the bus stop chicane. Uh, he's got some track still left to go before he's gonna get there. This is gonna be damn close. Uh times four tires, times six. Sounds about right. <coughs> this is gonna be really close. Into that bank he goes. Gonna slingshot out of that. He's got a couple of uh, group three cars in the way at the moment, which is not gonna make life a problem because in two pits. Uh, where is Woolly? Woolly is coming out now. This is gonna be really, really close. Here comes Roberts. Well, let's go with the chase cam and see. Uh, we'll see the uh, car of Woolly pop out. Woolly has popped out. It's really weird because it, in most on most circuits, you can see the cars come, come through the pit lane. But for some reason, the Daytona it doesn't show that car. It just appears at the end of the pit lane when it comes out, which is a bit shit. But there we go. So 4.4 seconds is the gap. That was uh, at one stage 15 and a half seconds in the opposite direction. Uh, at the last pit window, it was 13 seconds in the opposite direction. So that is some butter butter swing. Uh, so here we go. It is essentially straight track. And you can see that he hasn't fueled all the way. Uh, he, uh, he, sorry, he's fueled not full. Um, now, Woolly has a, a whole heap of it left. They both will still need another stop. But Woolly's got more. So when they go in, that it's going to be the amount of fuel you put on board that's going to make the difference in the pits. So Robert's going to have to catch him. He's going to have to pass him. He's going to have to gap him a little bit in order to... To, to give himself a cushion. Uh, we will see what we will see. Nothing are doing with those two. So Arkanite back in the lead of the GT3s. Uh, he's got another pit stop to come, um, but he's not going to be he's not going to be able to one stop it from that point. He's going to have another. It'll be as his second to last stop. So Ridders is coming in there. He's pitting. Class is going to have another stop. I think they're all going to have. So Class Class has got one more stop. Uh, Arkanite and Ridders have two. I think this is on one. Now. So after this one, he's got one more stop. Uh, so Classy back through. Uh, I, I, can't, I can't see. I can't see Ridders catching him. Um, Smithy Junior, 3.8 back. He's going to have to stop relatively soon as well. Fast uh, Also, um, as Michaela is in the pits now uh, for their penultimate stop. Uh, fastest lap is still with Woolley. Uh, that's a 131.0. Uh, but Prof Roberts already, already into that gap. Second, the race is on, baby. The race is on, but he will need to pit sooner. That that that's always going to be the factor. So Woolley needs to keep this guy behind him for as long as possible. He wants to force. What he wants to do, force Woolley, uh, force Woolley into 
um, using more fuel than he, wa he wants to into pushing those tyres, pushing those fuel beyond the envelope. So, you know, these drivers will go into this, they'll have a plan. They'll know when they plan to be, what uh, what equipment those are going to be. Um, and the way Woolley can, can mess with uh, with Willis now is, is, to, is, is to try and keep that gap for as long as possible. Force him to, to over push the car and use more fuel than he intended to at this stage of the race. Uh, and that's where it can, it can go all horribly wrong. You've got to bear in mind, he is, he is significantly quick right now. Uh, last lap for Roberts was a 31-3. Uh, three times off the fastest lap. Willie was a 33-1. Uh, but he had... Um, he, he's been in the pits. That's, that's the thing. So he's, he's, he's got the pit stop uh, under his belt. Uh, and the extra fuel under his belt, which is always going to be the... Uh, the big the big kicker of course so uh the other thing of course as well which we which we're not thinking about is, is that uh Roberts, of course doesn't necessarily need to change his tires when he goes in uh, i'd recommend it does and they can really really push but his tires should be in a relatively okay state so that's good for a couple of seconds when you go into the pits whereas really we definitely need to change it but the gap is coming down it's coming down so so quickly at the moment uh, and if he picks up that slipstream, would he find himself in big, big doo-doo, um, it, It's coming down very slowly. He's not getting enough drag at the moment, Roberts, to close that gap as quickly as he would uh, as he would like to. Uh, Woody needs a, needs a good infield here to maintain that to outside that one second. The slipstream is just not available to him. Uh, but Roberts, of course, will, want, uh, will have the other ideas and he wants to have the, uh, the best first, first uh, sector of his life. <laughs> <laughs> Woolley's 32 1, that lap 31 1. For Roberts, he's really pushing the car. Uh, really, really pushing it. Uh, he knows what he wants. He knows, he knows, he knows they've both got to stop again. Um, this, this could be. This could be an overtake long before we were expecting it. I thought it was going to be a few laps before he would catch him, but he, he just absolutely rapido. Uh, rapido. Through they go. This is the run now down to the bus stop chicane. He's in that slipstream now, is Roberts. Uh, the, the, he needs that kind of slingshot exit that you can get. That he, if you get the bus stop chicane right, that exit that just kind of propels you out. Um, of the other side, they've been spat out of the chicane, um, and just just pushes you into that uh, that lovely hole. The car ahead is punching in the air for you. Didn't really get it um, as quickly. A little bit of help there for um, Woolly, which uh, which isn't. Um, I, I genuinely thought that Porsche was going to come across to the left there and wipe Roberts out. So that actually that back up helped a little bit. The uh, GT3 car uh, really helped um, keep Woolley ahead for another lap into turn one. They go there very, very close now. You can see Robert's closing that gap and reeling him in. He's caught the little fishy, he's got him on the line, and now he wants to reel him in and bash him over the head with a rock. Take him over and cook him with some chips and mush and peas. <laughs> oh, well, where are we? No, he's got a uh, right, again, we've got a back marker getting involved uh, and, and changing the shape of this battle a little bit. Um, Woolley holding on desperately for dear life. He needs Roberts to back off or go in the pits or something uh, because at the moment it's just, it's just it's pressure, pressure, pressure all the time. And it, it's when you make mistakes, you're looking in your mirrors constantly, trying to see where your rival is, what your rival's doing. Is he trying to pull a fast one? Um, and this is a really dangerous place to encounter a back marker. It's dangerous for both drivers to get into that braking zone. This is where he needs it. Well, we'll have a look at Riddles in a minute. Riddles is ahead of uh, after that. We've got this battle here. Uh, again, he's not quite got the exit he was looking for. Um, better than last time, but still not quite quick enough. Revving the absolute monkey bejesus out. Uh, coming round that banking uh, in sick gear, not thinking about fuel in the slightest. 
Uh, class, yeah, class was like, I don't know. I think that was a pit stop thing. We'll have a look at it. Right, let's go have a quick look now and then we'll come back. So, uh, yeah, yeah, class was on the racetrack. It wasn't even with the pits. So, classy with a 46.3 last lap, 47.6 for Rivers. Uh, yeah, it, it really, this is not getting this done. Class, Classy's got this so up. Uh, tight, tight, tight. Uh, this is back to the battle for the lead of the group one. That is Roberts making his move finally in the infield. He's not got the inside line though, back out on to the trioval. But under breaking, manages to get that job done and is ahead of Woolley. Woolley needs to get tucked in and tucked in fast into that slipstream. He does not want Roberts to pull away. He's got to stick with him. He's got to get into this bus stop chicane within half a second of this car ahead of him. He's got to stay in that slipstream. Use that hole that's been punched through the air by Robert for him. Make sure he stays in it and stays with him. It's the only way he can win this race now. But you can see Robert's from so much quicker. Now just opening up that gap. Uh, will he not able to, to close in on it? Now we do know that Robert's going to have to pit before Woolley does, which is that's always going to be a factor um, about when they pit and how much fuel they need to put on. But it'd be so much quicker when he builds a big gap over it. It's going to make Willie's job so much harder to do. Uh, into turn one they go. He is a, he, he's still within that one second window, but it's, it, it's going to be fading fast now. Absolutely fading fast. I don't think Willie's going to... I, think, I, I thought out of the two, I thought Willie was most likely uh, Willie and Rivers to, to win their class. But uh, Robert's just absolutely... And nothing against Robert's been absolutely phenomenal. I built it for nice job. Um, so, uh, yeah, good for him, good for him. But nothing should be taken away from what well, you've got to consider that this guy was plum plum last at the end of the uh, and facing the wrong direction. So, um, uh, a phenomenal performance to get it back up onto the podium, uh, let alone um, to, to be fighting for him at this stage of the race. Let's go down the order, we don't have to go down that far because we've lost a couple of this lobby. Uh, fast Portuguese, uh, 8.6 seconds behind uh, Gikiega, uh, 5 seconds to uh, Smithy Jr. of Racing the Rebels, 9.9 uh, .9 to uh, Saber Venom, uh, 21 seconds to Arcanite, 21 seconds to Ar Arcanite, 6.6 uh, .6 to Ridders, um, who uh, is about to come through on class class in a bit, but Ridders will need to pit. Uh, two. It's not over for Ridders. Uh, twice. It's going to have to be a one. So um, that's classy in the pits now. Arkanite also think he's also going to have to be a one. Yeah, it's going to be a one. For a minute, I looked at the time I looked at the time. Uh, but uh, it was a bit of a thing. It's a plenty of places to go. And it stops to be had. So Robert made the move into the lead and then straight into uh, the pits he goes which puts Woolley back in the lead of this race. So it's done. Uh, right, so Woolley's back in the lead, um, but he's going to have to pit himself in about four or five laps. So, uh, and I think that will probably be, might be his last stop. I said, no, better than the second So So different to that, because the fuel feel so The body fuel feels so much quicker than the tyres. So they're really very much out of sync when they're pits, um, with tyres and fuel. And then when you factor in the use of the medium tyre as well, it really kind of throws things up in the air. Uh, yeah, I, 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 like, I know that time of daytime is brilliant because I love to see far from the distance. You can't see the car, you can just see the sparks of the, uh, the, 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 the chassis smashing against the, uh, smashing against the floor as the, the downforce is pulling that car into the tunnel. Uh, so 24 seconds is the lead. Um, he's going to need to open that gap up if he wants to be anywhere near in the right place to put a challenge in in the last few laps. Um, Justin Gant is 32 seconds back, half second penalty for him. Um, so that'll put him a little bit closer to the night shift in the, the, the pits. Uh, just coming to a stop now. Um, so that gap's going to get much, much bigger. Much, much quicker. So Ridders currently leads the GT3. Uh, 
a championship, but you can see his tyres are pretty much done with. Uh, he's going to need to change it out very soon. It, it looks to me for me like he's going really slowly, but I think so, you know when you watch the the, the group ones and you go to the group threes, um, it's almost like the group threes are moving um, because the group ones are going so fast. But uh, you're kind of leading uh, the group three championship, 5.7 seconds to Arcanite, uh, but they both are going to pit. I mean, uh, certainly Rizzo pitting, I would have thought, lap 36-ish. Uh, Arcanite maybe a couple of laps later, but uh, Blue Flag is going to be the What he's concentrating on at the moment. Uh, I'm getting tired now, it's more constant. Can I go? Can I go? Can I go? Uh, right, uh, Classy um, hasn't done much wrong today, to be fair. Has a, a, a got, got himself into the lead on lap one and pretty much has stayed there for the duration uh, other than through kind of pit um, pit cycles he's pretty much been there or thereabouts the whole time he's had a couple of little battles with riddles riddles ridders and with arcanite um but a bit of class c of his own really uh, Smithy Jr. Nothing for him to fight or do. Uh, he's 11 seconds behind class at the moment, um, off the pace of those other two threes, uh, and same with Venom's 23 seconds behind. Uh, unlikely we can see any kind of battle between those two. Um, although um, with Smithy having to go into the pits uh, soon, and same with not, maybe there'll be something. Kayla is 9.7 behind. Uh, I'm, I'm toying with the go to the end. I'm not from this point, I don't think. Uh, right, so that is uh, Justin Kant. Justin Gant in the pits. Uh, Ridders in the pits to get Ridders in the tyres. I've already done a joke. Um, it's still funny. Okay. Um, the gap's still 24 seconds. It's not on. Well, it's not, not, not into it like he has been doing. Or well, certainly did in that last thing. He was actually phenomenal last thing. Still couldn't be that fastest lap though, strangely. It was very quick for the whole skip, but couldn't be that 31-0 fastest lap. Um, I imagine that was with uh, uh, with, with a favourable wind and, uh, and um, some slip through. So Woody's into the pits now uh, and into the banking comes uh, Roberts. We'll see how far ahead. I, I, I think he's probably going to be something like 10 seconds clear of Woody once this is done. Uh, there's probably another pit stop in it for both of these guys. We've still got 26 minutes left. Yeah, should keep an eye on that one. There's got plenty of time left. Um, we've raced for so long that the numbers that don't fit in my little race time on the top of the screen. We need to get bigger for longer races. I just need to, I just need to move my little boat. I can't bother to move my I will, uh, I'll make myself a note to do it. Uh, so, where is he? He comes round now, uh, and he's quite some way ahead. Ten, what is that? I said 10 seconds. It's 9.5. Oh, man, I'm good at this shit. I should do this more often. Um, 10 seconds it is. Boom, boom. Um, race commentary, um, guesswork, all sorts. It's, 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 it's a science, man. It's a pseudoscience, but it's a science. Uh, I'm, I'm, like, I'm like the Jesus of first uh, podcast. The, the only difference being that I exist. Um, Woolley is uh, in second. I think. I, I think uh, unless something drastic happens to DSR Roberts, I think this is where uh, these two will finish this race. He's been he's been so hard to catch, um, but we'll see. There's still uh, still 24 minutes to go, so uh, anything can happen still. But I can't imagine without some sort of external intervention. Um, that anything's going to change here. Yeah. You don't suddenly get three seconds in the fight. Oh, you, you do. Um, Justin Gant will stay where he is. Night Shift will stay where he is. I think that top four will remain unchanged. Um, and also, I don't think the class is going to get caught. Um, 6.7 seconds. He's looking, uh, for one of the better pushes in the he's looking really quick. Um, really solid. 144.8 is his quickest lap. Um, quicker than anything we've seen from Ridders or from Arcanite. Uh, and Arcanite now 25 seconds back behind Ridders. Um, but he's got he's got a full tank of fuel. So he's gonna need less 
in that final stop wouldn't be a final stop. Um, he'll, he'll need less in that stop uh, because Riddles has, has done a few more times. But I think he did that to see if he could catch Classy. Um, now Classy's got half a tank left, he will stop again, and that will then be his final stop of this race. Lap 36 uh, for the Group 3 cars. It's lap 42, of course, for the Group 1 cars. As they are. Pull just for the back row. Um, yeah, I mean, it was 10 seconds, 12 seconds. In As I said, I don't think it's going to catch anytime soon. Nobody on the racetrack at the moment has really got a battle going on. They're spaced right out. Smithy uh, behind uh, Gikela. Um, potential battle there, 1.2 seconds. Is uh, Smithy going to catch? No, that is the eternal question. Um, you can see Gikela just, just edging away slightly um, with the. Uh, Smithy needs a good infield here to just get within that one second gap. He's not going to see KK run the pool away. Um, kind of hoping a little bit maybe he's drawn on the cars. And uh, KK are going very wide. That left Smithy right involved there now. Now we've got a bow ding dong. Uh, it's about bloody time. Um, into Jordan. This is where we saw uh, Willie facing the wrong way. And Smithy makes that move and makes it look pretty darn easy. Uh, we were begging out for a bit of a race and then it just kind of happened. Um, and they are, of course, teammates as well. So, um, internal bragging rights galore for that. You've got a lot of bragging rights. For that. Um, but uh, it's not over yet because it can go kind of quite easily um, get in that slipstream. Yeah, what, what a place to happen upon a much, much slower car uh, as you come into. Uh, Heading out towards the try over. Uh, that's actually helped uh, Smithy a little bit because uh, he wasn't held up in any way uh, by that car, whereas uh, Kikela was. It's 12 seconds back to fast Portuguese. Um, not really getting involved here, and uh, e even without this case, there's nothing to really change on these cars. That's a shame, shame we lost a couple so early on uh, from this race. You know, it doesn't make sense to me to know the, 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 the unforced disconnection. That's horrible. But the uh, I'm not winning, so I'm not staying in W. I've never really understood that. Um, yeah, I mean, you wouldn't do that in any other walk of life, would you? I mean, you wouldn't do it in any sport or anything. You would go, I won't worry about that. Man. <laughs> Just stop doing your work because it's not going the way you work. Um, well, I suppose you do. I do sometimes. Uh, but you know what I mean. You still got to go back and still got to finish it. And, uh, and, for a minute. and that seems to, it seems to be quite a, quite a prevalent attitude uh, among uh, GT drivers to, that rage quitting is, is, is somehow the uh, character building. Um, I, I heard someone describe it yesterday, um, quite amazingly. Yeah, you might be at the back and you might be having a bad race, but then. If you've got nothing left to race for, it's an, an ample time to have a look at what you do wrong and try different lines and, uh, and, and and looking at where you can improve on a particular corner. And you know, and, 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 and I know the argument back was that you know about getting people away and you know, I mean, that people. If you, it, the best place to learn has got to be in a racing environment. If you want to perfect your racecraft, whether you're fighting for a lead or fighting for mid-table or not fighting for anything at all. Uh, you want to be out there, you want to get as much race experience as you can. Uh, and, and give it a go. Um, it, it just seems more and more you've got, and it, it, to be fair, it's, it's changing. It's changing from rage quitting um, to pit quitting, where a lot of people go and sit in the pits for 25 laps um, in the hope they'll pick up a point for uh, for attendance. Um, and no, sorry, in my fucking job you won't say. If you, if, you, if, you, if you sit in the court, if you, if you live in the pits for 10 laps because you can't be asked to finish the race, you're going to get classified and shut up, my friend. Uh, and, 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 can't use it to drop out. So go and suck it. Uh, right, let's move on. Right, <laughs> um, gap still at 12 seconds. Uh, not super, super over pushing the car. 
should be the final pit stop. Should be the final pit stop in uh, back to it. Uh, we will have to stop again but we're looking for a splash and dash. This might not be over, you know, with the, with the pit situation because uh, I don't know if Woolley can make it. I'm, I'm wondering whether Woolley can make this to the end. And if he can't, he certainly doesn't need to put a lot of fuel in. Uh, that could actually be the difference is how long you spend in the pits. Oh, we got that all kinds of wrong. Uh, did he think he was going straight on there? That was all kinds of wrong. That's uh, upsetting his rhythm a little bit. Um, right, so Classy in for what should be his final stop. Uh, 7.9 ahead of Ridders, um, who will at some stage need to do the same. Uh, he goes through, as you would expect. Uh, Arcanite eventually will get there, but probably not get ahead of Classy. And he still needs to stop again as well. Um, has uh, it looks like he had a bad lap, but yeah, he did. Uh, lost 15 seconds. Does that give Saber Venom something to aim at now? Uh, that he's got a driver ahead, um, although he is pretty simple and faster. Um, he's a potential driver ahead, but he comes in actually. So, uh, so that, that battle, that, that question is answered immediately. Uh, Smithy Jr., we know, is ahead of Kuna uh, and. Uh, Excuse me. Right, so class comes out 22 seconds behind Ridders. Um, Ridders has better tyres. Well, he, he, he's got tyres he doesn't necessarily need to change. Um, he's probably done better tyres. Um, and he's not got to put quite as much fuel in to get him to the end. Um, I, I, st I still can't sleep past class. But it might be a little bit closer than we think. But who knows? Uh, 13.7. Right, so in comes uh, Monsieur Robert for his final stop. Now, Woolley, uh, does he come in now or stay out? He's got much less fuel he needs to put in. Now, I, you know, I, would, have, I would have come in now, um, knowing that I only need one more stop in the splash. I would have come in now and just chucked that one at the time. Um, you know, oh, another mistake from Woody there. Uh, the only problem, of course, is that Woody won't necessarily know uh, what the situation is. Well, he will, because he'll be out there somewhere on screen. He's going to see he's got three percent of it. He'll know that he's got half a tank. He'll know how long the tournament has spent in there filling up. Well, I think it would have been worthwhile going in and doing that pit stop there at the same time as him uh, and trying to negate as much of the pit loss as possible. Uh, 9.6. Uh, seconds is the gap. Now the question is, can he be faster for a little bit? If he can be faster and open the gap up, and it is at 10 seconds right now, um, he can put himself in a good position, but he's left pit for as long. But I don't think he's going to be enough. Unless he can find some significant pace for somewhere over the next I think it was 15 minutes, so we're talking about 7 or 8 minutes. Eight minutes whatever it is. Um, good little run there behind uh, Briefly giving him a small boost of power. Man, I'm tired now. This is an absolute kill. Okie dokie, I'll do a quick check something. It's not my fault. Um, <coughs> I'm waiting a couple of minutes. Uh, right, uh, 22, 24 seconds. What happens to make it 24 seconds quite simple? He's going slow. Why is he going slow? What is going on? Uh, DSR Roberts is going slowly. Now that suggests to me that he is having either a technical issue or a poop. <laughs> or is he after? Oh, he's run out of fuel. He run out of dust. Oh, he forgot to fuel in the pit stop. So he's gone in, he's changed the tyres, he's accidentally clicked the button to send him back out on track. Devastating. Woolley is going to take this by virtue of an errant button press by Roberts in the pits. Agonising, agonising round the, the track. Um, 
I, I, I love the way I first went to gone for a poo before I went to run out of fuel. <laughs> I'm freaking believable. Um, <laughs> right, so, so that actually now put Justin Gantz, uh, he would have to stop again though, um, in second. Um, this is this has changed things dramatically. He's still not even at, in the box yet. Uh, Woolly is almost a lap ahead. That's absolutely killed Robert. He did, and he fully deserved that win. To be fair, fully deserved it. But it, it just I, what did I say? I said this race was going to be decided by outside forces, something out of the ordinary, something you weren't expecting. Uh, and thing is it's easy enough sometimes particularly when you've been racing for this level of time holding that concentration uh, it just kind of throws you sometimes uh, at the moment Justin Gant has a free pit stop over Roberts he is significantly quicker um, but he could be turning first into third quite quickly 12.5 12 minutes 52 seconds to the end of this race um, He'll be, and I'll tell you now, he will be absolutely seeded in that mid right now. He'll be absolutely seeded. Um, you wouldn't believe he did it. Uh, he would have said fucking bugger a lot when he came out of the pits. Uh, right, so Woolley now 57 seconds good. That's Justin Gant in. Woolley, may have, listen, he can see the gap now. Go in the pits now. Why, why wait? Get in the pits now. Get it done. Uh, then you know what your gap is. Then you know what you're playing with. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't hesitate any longer now. You know you're going to have to go in at some stage anyway. Just get it done now, and then then it's, then it's there. Then, then you've got the answer. You know what the the gap is going to be, uh, and you know where you stand. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't chance it. Uh, don't forget to not press the uh, out one. Justin can You see that he's got the fastest lap of the race with that 31-0, and he picked up a couple of laps ago. That was an absolute. Post. So he's not been super super slow just not been quite as consistently quick as the guys out ahead uh, and that's a spin coming straight out of the pits that's uh, uh, it was not what he wanted to do uh, at all that could have just put pay to his uh, chances of second see he comes out of the pits Why is it coming? Just... as you can see here just gets it wrong uh, on those cold tires goes sideways um, absolutely not ideal. Uh, so that means that Roberts is only 4.8 seconds behind him now. Um, although we know Justin Kent's capable of uh, of the fastest lap, he's done it. 31. Can he hold on for second? That's the hunker hunker burning question. Uh, as Woolly coming around, he's got uh, that's Justin behind. So that's, that's a lap between. Them. Uh, that's first and second, and there is a lap between them. <coughs> <coughs> you expect to see that after 12, 12 hours into a 24 hour race, not um, an hour and 20 minutes into a, into a 90 minute race. But, here's what it is. So, Woolly needs to pit, uh, and he's going to do so this lap. Uh, in he goes, so just going to one lap himself. Thank you very much, Jim much um, And be back on the same lap as Woolly is. Um, an entire lap behind is Robert Butt. Uh, can he catch Justin? Six seconds uh, in ten minutes is what he's got to do. He needs to drive like he's never drove, drove before. Drove before. Um, that can't be right. Uh, 152, 152, 152, 152, 155. Uh, wasn't super, super quick. So he, 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 he needs to do a... He, he, he needs to give us a, a, some 131s now, a 130s. Uh, 130.8s across the board would be ideal um, to start closing that gap. So Woody comes out, he's miles clear. Um, he's going to win this so convincingly. When it, it wasn't that long ago that it looked like he was going to uh, just have to settle for second and, and be done with it. And now he's going to win this by almost an entire lap. Uh, but there we go, it is what it is. Racing is what racing is uh classy is 8.5 seconds clear of ridders they're both well uh, fuel's gonna be squeaky bum for classy i'm not sure that's over i think classy may have 
put it wrong somewhere on fuel some, at some point. Uh, oh, he's in the pits now, so he's going to have to chase down Ridders for the win here because Ridders is going to come through and should be able to get to the end with what he has left. So, it, it has Dane pulled an absolute fucking masterstroke and, and predicted the future? Uh, and albeit that, that one was pure goddamn luck. Um, or uh, has Glasgow got something to say about that? Is Glasgow going to change the script? So Ridders is uh, in fit. Where's well, Arcanite as well? He's not close enough. Not close enough. Glasgow is out. 11.4 seconds. Um, 145.6. Ridders certainly capable of 45 fours as well. Um, it's, I, I think Ridders has nicked it. And I think um, uh, Mali Nitor has um, absolutely fucking smashed it uh, with his predictions um, with Ridders and Woolly. Uh, I'm not, I'm not giving you, uh, listen, Ridders I'll give you on ability. Woolly, you're not having an ability. Uh, it, that was, that was, that was a cock up that handled to him. Uh, he was good, but he weren't that good. <laughs> now, to be fair, if he had a spun on uh, lap one, he would probably have been significantly further ahead. Because he was what a good, he was a good 35, 40 seconds back. Um, hunt mode activated. Uh, right, so the gap from uh, Roberts to Justin is not going to catch Willie. Uh, 3.3 seconds. He's got seven minutes to catch and pass. Uh, classy. 11.2 behind Ridders. He's got seven minutes to catch and pass. Can't see it. Uh, I can't see how Carson is going to get even close to Ridders. However, I wouldn't be surprised if that 3.1 seconds by the time we cross the finish line is a lot, lot smaller, if not uh, a negative number. Uh, because Roberts is going to be fuming. You know he's going to be absolutely seething, foaming at the mouth. Um, all the fucks and buggers in the world coming out of his mouth. Um, which would have been for the last few laps. Uh, and that, that would have calmed him enough to, to put the zone back on and, uh, and get in that uh, and put the car back on the rails as they on all day to try and close out the gap and see that he's going to take a second out of Justin Gallup, uh, who ironically is the fastest man on the racetrack at the moment with a 31 at zero. Uh, don't be surprised when you see that get smashed in a bit by DSR Roberts. Uh, it's not changed, it's 11.9 seconds, it was 12 seconds. It's taking a tenth, two tenths out of him. Um, he's going to take some time out of him, I, I have no doubt about that. But I don't think he's going to take any of this over the next few minutes. You do, you, you know what? You, you called it, you said, you said William Ridders, you said it. Uh, but, yeah, fuck it. Here's what it is. You guessed. Uh, and you've got, uh, to be fair, it, it's it's not been on driver ability. It's been on, it's been led to driver error more than anything else. Classy got it wrong somewhere with uh, the fuel and, and stuff and, and kind of left himself out of sync with the pit stops and it threw him out and he went to pit late. Uh, and uh, Roberts went out of the pits without actually putting any fuel in, which meant he ran out and it took him about six months to get back around the track. Um, and and, and Daytona is probably one of the worst places to have to. I mean, oh, yeah, obviously, the pit stop or, or, or the number of or Lord Life, I should say. Um, but, yeah, in terms of like normal size racetracks, it's quite a bad one because it's so fast and it's got those massive, long, uh, long straights that sweep in their hands. When you run out of fuel here, it, it, it's so much more costly than somewhere that's a bit more twisty and turny and uh, where you're going to slow down more. Uh, so yeah, that's a devastating blow for uh, for him. Uh, but he's closing on Justin. Big time on Justin. All uh, right, let's do the full full run down. This is the last uh, four minutes, four four and a half minutes of the race. We lost very early on. We lost uh, we lost uh, the Mexican driver. We lost him very very quickly to a disconnection. Um, one of those unfortunate things. Uh, we then lost another driver to what I am calling. Um, rage quit 1.0. Um, Gekala is currently running in 
second last place. Um, that was until they passed the pits where Fast Portuguese is, is uh, doing the last stop of the race. Um, it looks like they ran out of fuel as well because that clock is a ticking long, long, long time. Um, yes, they're going to put a splash in just around the last couple of laps. Uh, Kikela uh, in 10th. <coughs> That's where they will stay. Unless something goes wrong, the same event is 6.3 up the road. 14.3 behind Smith and Jr., who is 27 seconds uh, behind uh, Arcanites. Uh, Arcanite is 13 off Classy, who is uh, who's closing the gap on Ridders, uh, but uh, alas, is going to run out of time before that gap is small enough to do anything about. A uh, track position is going to have to uh, have to have to. Oh look, and look, pushing too hard. Um, this could bring Arcanite back in. All this additional pushing, this could do not just cost him first, but cost him second as well. So Classy is back on the way. Uh, where is Arcanite now? Why is the gap still? Oh, there we go. That's better. The gap down to 4.8 seconds. Uh, not catching Ridders, Ridders anymore. Um, how did he not get damage hitting the, uh, the invisible tire wall? Uh, although, he, although it was very much visible when he hit it. Um, who knows? Uh, right, so so that puts um, Ridders uh, on the uh, on on the, on the top step of the podium for this uh, group four uh, group three race. Uh, Night Shifter uh, currently running in fourth, he's forty three seconds behind um, Robert Souza, one point six behind Justin. Um, I don't know if he's going to catch him now. I don't think he is. I think DSR Roberts with that big massive massive cock up and that's the only way you can describe it um, human error massive massive cock up I'm leaving the pits without fueling uh, it, it, it has turned has turned a W into a 3 very very quickly um, there is still this lap and one more to go to catch Justin but uh, Justin got two seconds ahead and uh, he will be flinched only that car so we'll have his foot on the accelerator you know, two feet out of the bottom of the car, we fixed that in that mofo around that last lap to keep it away uh, and take that second place uh, that he so didn't think was going to happen. Uh, and Woolley um, cannot believe his luck. Um, last time he was in this, uh, 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 sorry, lap one when he was uh, in this section, had the car facing in the opposite direction um, and was plumb last. And I, I bet at that stage he wasn't thinking. Um, I can't wait for the last lap when I'm going to be like a minute clear and I'm thinking uh, I've got an hour and a half of this shit. <laughs> um, so, yeah, a big turnaround for Woolley, he's going to be well chuffed. Good day off to him. Uh, someone might be getting some strange tonight. Uh, right. What battle are we looking at this one? We're looking at whether I can, I can catch a class. I don't think he can. Class is, has found his rhythm again. The rhythm found the rhythm it's not going to happen again uh, are they going to make it to the end of this lap or not time's going to run out before they get there so Ridders uh, 34 seconds before he crosses the, uh, the start finish line uh, if, he does, if, he, if he does get another lap uh, he will most certainly win without question but I don't think he will get there before I don't know 20 seconds between bus stop and there and a GR3 you would need to be driving exceptionally fast. Into the final sector he goes. This will be the last lap for Ridders. Um, and a good solid group three win for him uh, and the RRT team. Um, round the final when he goes. Foot flat to the floor. Um, is he going to whip up the handbrake and do a little spinny 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 thing? A uh, little jiggle of the wheel. And uh, that's a, a P1 for him. Classy. Um, was classy the whole race, but it a little bit towards the end. Uh, just misjudged the, 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 the pit stop strategy. Uh, comes home in second. Arcanite, um, for a while, was battling for that lead, but uh, comes back in uh, seventh position. Only 12 seconds to that not bad at all in that period of time. Uh, Smithy Jr. Uh, will be the next one home. Uh, Roberts finished in second. He did catch Justin Gant in the end. What do I can, uh, this is where he caught him. I've been caught him before that final run. So, uh, there we go. That's the main thing. Uh, but 
there is your winner, Willie, for uh, snatches. Now, that is a snatching victory from the jaws of utter dismal defeat. Um, that is a phenomenal performance from him, uh, from P last to P fast. So I did that. Uh, won that race. Um, he, he got a helping hand. Let's, let's, let's look two ways about it. Don't take away from the, the achievement of DSR Roberts to, to dominate the way he did. But one slight mistake is all it takes and Woolley gets the win. Uh, good performance all round. It's been some good racing today, man. Three hours of it. Um, it's been a long, good day for racing. We've got Formula One this morning. Loads of GT this afternoon. Uh, loving it, loving it, loving it. Um, hopefully, though, touch with the next week. Corinthians will have his, uh, have his shizzle fixed, and he'll be. You'll, you'll have his dulcet tones from from, uh, from eight till uh, late. Um, you'll have me from six. I, I'll, I'll do it. Uh, why are we why are we taking so long? Night, oh, night shift has run out of fuel. So just waiting for him to crawl home. Boom Shanker, we're done, baby. <coughs> <coughs> uh, let's just go to the uh, final classifier just to confirm. Uh, Woolly from um, DSR Roberts. Uh, from Justin Gant from Night Shifter, they were in the 919 hybrids. Um, Ridders uh, wins from Classy, um, Arcanite Smithy uh, Jr. Uh, Sabre Venom from Gikela, Fast Portuguese in that AMG GT3 uh, coming in in last place, and uh, a DNF for Cornejo from Mexico, and a Rage Quit from J Dog. Um, from the United States of America. Fuck yeah! Uh, right, we're done. Um, thank you very much for joining me on this Sunday evening for um, a ridiculous moment. It's basically four hours and four hours, 15 minutes. Um, it's been really, really great fun. Uh, I've enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next week. We're at uh, Laguna Seca next week. Um, all that's left to say is uh, I've been Adam Pirate. This has been uh, the Sims Endurance Challenge. Lobbies 1 and 2. Uh, it's been emotional. <laughs>